NSW, what's the worst thing that's happened at your family gathering? Was celebrating an uncle's birthday and we realized about 15 minutes into it that grandma died. Everyone lost their mind, because she was 75 and seemed fine 10 minutes before. Died of a massive brain aneurysm. Whole family was devastated. I still took some cake. Christmas dinner. Grandpa picked up something at the store that wasn't what grandma asked for. Grandma threw frozen chicken at grandpa's head. Grandpa ducked. Chicken hit glass patio door, shattering it. Police were called. Children were quickly taken and driven home. And grandma wonders why most of the family doesn't make much of an effort to stay in touch. My brother throwing a temper tantrum at age 30. It has been pretty common for him to blow up about little crap all his life. It was his youngest daughter's second birthday and he was in a crappy mood all day even though our mom and his wife had taken care of everything. It came to a head when it was about time to do the cake. It was a kind of tall cake with a carousel on the top. The dog bumped into the table and the cake shifted a little, almost knocking the carousel over. He stood up and said something like, God damn it, your freaking dog is ruining everything. My mom said, calm down, the cake is fine. He got in her face and said, don't tell me what to do be at that point my brother and stepdad got up and kind of surrounded him ready to kick his butt. He after a few seconds he finally stormed out of the house and left. I feel the need to reiterate at this point that he was 30 years old and it was his daughter's second birthday. TL. DR. My brother's 2 year old daughter was more mature than my brother. I am floored that someone like this duped someone not only into marrying him, but breeding with him. I used to live in Mauritius and there, fireworks are legal, like you can buy them anywhere and play with them any time of the year. Now there are certain dates where a lot of fireworks are used, New Year's of course, Holy, Indian festivity, as well as Diwali, also Indian festival. Anyways, my whole family is of Indian origin and we celebrate Diwali every year. I normally live in a house that includes 4 families and a total of 16 people but during Diwali, everyone directly related comes which amounts to roughly around 45-50 people. We are outside around 9pm when it's already dark outside and we are playing with fireworks. And the kids are enjoying themselves when we decide to use a specific firework. Looks like a rocket. You put it in a standing bottle and light it up. It will go high up in the air and explode. So we put one in a plastic bottle and just before it goes up, the bottle wobbles and starts falling and the firework goes straight into the neighbor's only open window. The neighbor got a house of two floors with about a bazillion windows. All closed except one and that's the one that it aims. We watch in awe and horror as it goes straight into the room with the window open and after 1.5 second the whole room lights up followed by a big bam. I crap you not. I never saw 50 people go through a small door so quickly. Here we are. At 9pm. 50 people poking their heads out from behind the curtains looking at the window scared shitless. The next day. We didn't come out before at least 12. TLDR. Family gatherings and legal fireworks equals bad idea. Edit. For people asking, no fire happened and nobody was injured. Thank god plus. About 12 years ago we were all at my uncle's house. Me, my siblings, parents, grandparents, and obviously my aunt and uncle. Grandpa was drinking some coffee with dessert when it went down the wrong pipe and he choked up a bit. My mom, being one of the biggest overreactors I've ever known assumes he's having another heart attack. He has a history of heart trouble, and flips the frick out. When my aunt tried to intervene and say that he wasn't having a heart attack and only coughing because of the coffee they got into a screaming and shoving fight. Eventually my uncle just goes get the frick out of my house. Get the frick out now. 10 minutes later we're all in the car and out of there. Up until last year they cut off all contact with my aunt and uncle and fairly recently they've talked to them. Added them on Facebook. Invited them to events. Etc. WTF. This is like a scene from the Home Alone family. One Thanksgiving my uncle and cousins brought along their pregnant chihuahua which gave birth in my bed. My sister, whose medical credentials included high school biology, delivered the puppies. Unfortunately, none of them lived. TL. DR. I needed a new mattress. My dad died. Christmas evening, around 9pm we get to my mom's boyfriend's parents house Christmas dinner and family and all that. After going Christmas lights looking, my mom gets a call and disappears the rest of the night. 
Actually, all the adults are pretty much gone. Hey, whatever. 12 year old me throws on a movie and falls asleep on the couch. Wake up the next morning and extended family members, family friends, all kinds of people start showing up. I remember thinking okay, what's going on? Seriously and then my mom walks out after being unseen for the whole night and tells my two younger siblings and I that my dad had a heart attack. What? Is he okay I asked. With eyes that could rip your heart out. No, baby, he died. And I remember my mom's voice choked cracked a bit on the last syllable. I remember my sister crying daddy, no, and her buying face into a pillow. But I just felt numb. Not hot, not really cold, just, there. I fell back into the couch in disbelief. He can't be gone. What kind of sick joke is this? Who was the world to take my dad from me? I remember walking around the neighborhood after that to get some air, wondering how the world could just go on. How it was a nice day outside and cars passing and people smiling. The funeral was 4 days later in Dallas, 4 hours from where I live because that's where he lived at the time and died, and that's why my mom got a phone call and not his roommate at the door. He was buried on my brother's 7th birthday. I remember them standing beside the grave as my dad was lowered in. I was in the van because I just couldn't stand there and watch him be put in the ground. Sorry for the long story, had this in my head a while. TL. DR. My old man kicked the bucket on Christmas, was buried on my brother's 7th birthday, edit. Thank you all for your support and your stories, I tid up a bit reading some, and it gave me some newfound hope for humanity. Keep on, keeping on, read it. Like your brother's birthday wasn't already ruined by all the combo presents from being so close to Christmas. My favorite uncle was an early casualty of the AIDS epidemic. He was gay, and out long before it was in any way acceptable. Think small southern town, late 80s. At his funeral, my grandmother was telling everyone he was a junkie that shared needles, just to avoid admitting he was gay to her church friends, as if that were a more respectable way to have gotten the virus. I'm sorry to hear that. Our worst family story happened at my aunt's wedding. My aunt, a white lady, was marrying a Korean American man whose parents really wanted him to marry a Korean woman. During their entire engagement, his parents would invite random Korean women over for dinner to try and sway him. Eventually, they seemed to get over the fact that he was definitely going to be marrying a white girl. On the wedding day, his parents seemed politely resigned to the situation. His father actually even danced with my aunt at the reception, so we were all relieved. After dancing, his father approached the mic, and we all expected him to give a toast about how my aunt was so great that he overcame his prejudices or something. Instead, he said, in his thick Korean accent, this is abomination, like German shepherd mating with poodle. My aunt ran out of the room crying, and my grandfather casually walked up and punched him in the face, in front of 200 wedding guests. People cheered. Well, it was a series of events, but it all came to a head at my grandfather's funeral. However, I'll attempt to make this as short as possible. So a number of years back my grandfather had a stroke. No one knew it was a stroke till 2 or 3 years later, while he was refurbishing his 32 Chevy, which he treated better than his family. Eventually he starts to deteriorate and can no longer care for himself and my grandmother can no longer do it by herself. In comes my brother who closes down the business he just opened in order to be his full time caregiver. I helped as much as I could, but I lived 4 hours away at the time finishing up college. Occasionally, his brothers and sister would come to visit, but for no more than 20 minutes before they had to scurry out the door for important business all the while telling him how much they loved him. Eventually he passes away in a peaceful manner surrounded by my family. I'm still away at this point, and reconciles with them for all the crap he had put them through. In comes his siblings who, once again shriek like banshees while mourning his death as if they had done everything to care for him. They did not. However, my grandfather said I took care of him more often than they did and I was a full time student who lived 4 hours away. Then comes the wake or open casket viewing for those who may not know, where his family puts on a show for everyone to show their love in a public setting. Eventually things slow down and my grandmother thinks it would be nice to share our fond memories of him with those who have gathered to show their support, which we do. However, when my grandmother gets up to speak, they begin to chatter amongst themselves and abruptly leave in the middle of her speech. 
This was the last straw for my father who confronted them and told them they would no longer be able to carry his casket to lay him to rest. The following day at the funeral things went eerily smooth, although they did the whole banshee wails again for attention, but other than that his was peaceful. Then comes the final goodbyes before we lay him down to rest. All of the sisters thought it would be great to write a joint letter to my brother and grandmother who took care of him in his final days and speak their minds. The gist of the letter was that they killed him, neglected him and ignored him which led to his death. Also included was a jab at my nephew, who was 2 at the time, stating that if my brother cared for his son like he cared for my grandfather, he would have another tinier casket to deal with in the near future. They ended the letter telling us to repent of our sins and to ask God for forgiveness unless we wish to burn in heck. We don't speak much anymore with that side of the family. I was 10 and there was a family gathering at my aunt's house with a bunch of people staying over at her house. I get called into the family room and all my aunts are there looking at me. They start questioning me about my grandma's clock and whether I was playing with it, which I did. So I said yes. It turns ugly real quick. And it's an all out argument between my mom defending me and my aunts accusing me of breaking my grandma's $5 clock. They keep grilling me about whether I broke the clock, although it wasn't broken. The batteries just fell out. Fight drags out into the night. The hosting aunt brings out other instances of how I wasn't behaving. Like running my fingers through her carpet and drawing on her carpet with my finger. Eventually accuses my dad of purposely breaking her sleeping bags. Me being 10 and not understanding what this fight is actually about feels guilty that maybe I caused this whole thing because I played with my grandma's clock. And my poor mom is defending me when I might have broken my grandma's clock by playing with it. The hosting aunt eventually apologized to my mother months later. But it made things really awkward. For 10 plus years, even now things aren't really the same. Years after the whole thing. I realized it wasn't really even about me or the clock, it was about some other crap that I don't really even understand, but my aunts used me as their point of attack. I even remember me saying all this over a clock when I was 10 during the fight, and one of my aunts insisting it was more than that implying that it was about how I was a horrible liar or something. You can't make this crap up. At a birthday party of my rich gay uncle. In the middle of the eating area filled with older gay people my little 5 year old cousin starts singing the everyone has AIDS song because her parents were hip and watched it with her because the movie just came out. I have never seen a little girl take command of a room like that or parents try to run across a packed room so quickly. My older brother died in his sleep when he was 16 shortly before Christmas in 2005. During his funeral, my grandfather, mom's dad, got up to speak right after my sobbing dad and said, I'm the grandfather. I just wanted you all to know that and sat down. Everyone either looked confused or extremely pee off. The reason why this was extra crappy was because we had never seen him until then. My mom had spoken about him in a very negative way over the years and told us he had left her and her siblings when they were young. He worked as a pimp and drug dealer. And he had recently gotten a 25 year old pregnant. A few months after my brother's funeral, my mom told me my uncle had been born. One of my best friends attended the funeral and he still likes to joke about my grandfather. Bonus story. Two days later my girlfriend of two years cheated on me at a New Year's Eve party. Went to a family reunion in the holler of Kentucky with folks I thought I knew. It was my cousin's or great uncle's house. I'm not too sure. And he is 80 plus years old and his family has owned this land forever. Everyone except for my immediate family was very close to them. So some like 12 year old girl in my family, who is white, brings over a black girl. Everything was fine and dandy till one of the owners saw this. He yelled at the top of his lungs what the frick is this crap. Insert ick name here. Didn't build this land to have N on IT. IT ain't right. That little girl will never forget that. She had to deal with real racism right in her face and I was so embarrassed for being a part of that family and felt that I had to apologize for being associated. We left very quickly after. Comma in the holler of Kentucky. That's when I knew. We were at my uncle's house for Thanksgiving one year when I was about 7 or 8. 
His Irish setter had puppies that were about 10 weeks old. My cousins and I spent most of the morning playing with the pups until the meal was ready. My uncle put the pups in their fenced off area of the garage so we could eat. Everyone started to sit down when we heard tires screeching on the highway. We all went outside to see what happened. Turns out the puppies had escaped out of the garage. Three of them were hit by a car on the highway. Two were still alive but their injuries were pretty bad. There wasn't a vet anywhere nearby, so dad did the only thing he could. He picked up both of the puppies, grabbed a rifle, and took them a few miles away to do what needed to be done. He was very upset when he got back. My cousins and I cried for a long time. That wasn't the best Thanksgiving I've had. Not mine, but HS Sweethearts. They are having a family reunion for the week in Myrtle Beach. Most of the family is gathered around the hotel pool, including her female cousin's family, husband, two young kids. A cousin's room is on the fourth floor overlooking the pool and she comes out to take a picture before coming down. When she leans against it, the metal guardrail snaps off and she plunged to her death in front of everyone. My GF says she will never forget to her own dying days the sound of her cousin's body hitting the concrete deck of the pool. The silver lining is that the kids were too young to really understand what had just happened to their mother. I have never trusted a guardrail since hearing this. Oh. My god. That's awful. Best Christmas ever. My uncle took two days to prepare a dinner at his catering business. The spread was awesome. Tons of turkey, prime rib, veggies, pies, cakes, champagne. All the family was invited. My cousin who owned a bed and breakfast showed up with 10 people we'd never seen before. They formed a line and began loading their plates up while raving about the great food. My aunt asked me to ask him who these folk were. It turned out he had charged his guests $50 each to come to an all-you-can-eat buffet. My aunt was livid. I thought she might attack her nephew for a minute. I was the guy who had to explain to the new guests this was a private party. They instantly turned on my cousin and began demanding refunds. I eventually got everyone outside under the B&B van. But the party was ruined. My aunt has a long memory. Cuz wasn't invited to family functions for years. Someone got stabbed at my wedding reception. So, that was fun. It was my brother and sister's dad and his girlfriend who had gotten into some drunken, knife-wielding fight in the parking lot. A Dothraki wedding without at least three deaths is considered a dull affair. I'm a little late to this party, and this isn't particularly bad, but I find it hilarious. Christmas Eve at my aunt and uncle's house. About two years ago, my great aunt brought her small dog, and one of my aunt's relatives brought her baby. The baby was new to walking, and her shoes got no traction, so she was falling a lot. The dog noticed at one point, and rushed over to her and starting sniffing her. The baby absolutely loved this, and figured out that she could let the dog chase her for a few feet, fall on purpose, and get dog attention. The dog interpreted things differently, and after this had happened three times or so, started humping the baby. Fortunately, my great aunt was able to grab the dog before he got too far, while everyone else in the room was laughing too hard to be useful. I don't think the baby's parents ever found out about that. Huge family reunion at the old farmhouse that's been in my family forever, and has recently been taken over restored by my uncle and his husband. Adults are downstairs drinking their way through a small ocean of wine, children are sequestered upstairs where they will not bother anyone or hear any dirty stories. In this story I am 8 years old and, like most children, have no sense of privacy or personal space. After about 10 minutes, cousins and I get bored with the movie we are watching and proceed to get into everything within reach, including, Wonder of Wonders a whole dresser filled with the best dress, up clothes ever, there were dresses and sequins and jewelry and high heels and feathers and all kinds of great stuff, so we decide we're going to have a fashion show, 10 minutes later, 5 small children are sashaying down the stairs into the heart of the party, totally done up in my uncle's drag queen outfits, best, party, ever. When I was 9, me and my brothers along with my aunt and cousins went to the zoo. I got into a fight with my cousin of the same age and punched him in the throat. We fought over who saw the cheetah first. It was me. I saw the cheetah first. I have this one cousin. She's single and in her 40s kind of a mess. And every family gathering she has a meltdown. She always gets too drunk. Yells. 
cusses, gets up in your personal space, hits people, drives home drunk, breaks things, tries to give the younger kids alcohol because she thinks it's funny, and overall just causes a huge scene every time. There's always something ratchet that goes down when she's around. It's sad because she's actually very smart and funny and relatively normal when she's not drinking. She was banned a few years ago from attending any more functions unless she doesn't drink and we haven't really seen her since. It's kind of sad. Pretty tame compared to the rest but, my gf got really drunk at my cousin's wedding reception and decided to boo someone when they were giving a speech about the bride and groom. With an exit of family gathering, maybe thanksgiving. Everyone decided to take that year's family picture around the big tractor my ex's dad owned. This thing had all sorts of attachments, including a pretty large backhoe bucket. Dad turns it on, raises the bucket a bit for the elder members of the family to sit on, then turns it off. The little kids pile up in the cab of the tractor. One of the ex's uncles had adopted this little girl who was weird. She decided to start fiddling with the controls of the tractor. Now, the tractor is turned off. But apparently the controls could still release the hydraulics. So down goes the bucket with grandma and grandpa sitting on it. Everyone starts screaming. Grandma is quick enough it get away. But not grandpa. A kid pulls the controls the other way. Thinking the bucket will lift. But it just keeps going down and pins grandpa's legs under it. Everyone is screaming. But kind of frozen until I nudge the ex-boyfriend and he turns the tractor on and raises the bucket. Grandpa is bruised but okay. Though I doubt his legs were in the same condition after that. TLDR. Weird adopted kid accidentally pins grandpa under a backhoe bucket during family photo op. That's totally the adult's fault. Okay so I have a cousin who can fart on command. There's a name for it but I cannot remember. He sucks in air while bending over doggy style and then releases said air as a fart. It's hilarious and we make him do it every time there's a family gathering. Anyway, we're all hanging out having a grand old time, when we hear his long-awaited father coming home from work to join us all for Thanksgiving dinner. He's coming through the garage which is connected by stairs and goes directly into their family room, whom only me, my brother and my farting cousin are in. Everyone else is chatting in the kitchen. So my cousin waits to the side, slightly out of view from the entrance of the door, waiting for his dad to come and so he can fart on him and we can all have a good laugh. His dad enters, he farts, frigate plop, something has exploded out of my cousin along with the fart, his pants are down, and shot across the doorway, narrowly missing his father and tacking sharply to the wall, like a spitball of crap. This was obviously hilarious so we all start dying with laughter. His father is crying and laughing. Everyone in the kitchen comes into a very confusing scene. The rest of the night was normal though. Just how cousins and us. Shoot him the crap. TL. DR. Cousin farts on command and launches. Collateral. Hilarity. When I read this I was dying. So I showed my dad. While he was reading this I was literally bent over from laughing so hard. My dad turns to me in the most serious face shakes his head and says there is something wrong with you. I was about 10 years old at the time and we went to a restaurant for some holiday because my family was super busy around that time and no one wanted to cook. We were talking about schools and my cousin says only poor people send their kids to public school. I looked at him and said so you're calling my family poor he looked at me and just made an arrogant face and shrugged. Something as simple and stupid as this caused a rift between our families for a few years. My wedding. Leading up to the wedding. My wife's cousin gave us more drama and headache than anyone an N family has ever done. She was originally going to be in the bridal party, but she complained about not being the maid of honor. She tried scheming her way into the position and constantly belittled me and my family. Eventually, I told her she wasn't welcome at the wedding and she certainly wasn't going to be in it. She showed up at the ceremony, thankfully, quite early, and my oldest brother, also best man, alerted me and asked me what I wanted done. I confronted her and told her to leave. She refused, so I called the police and had her removed from the property. After the honeymoon, we received phone calls on the middle of the night so she could tell us how horrible we were. I filed for a restraining order and now the cousin, her mom, my wife's aunt, and an uncle that sided with the B don't talk to us. The aunt tried to hold a family meeting last year and didn't want me involved. I showed up and when she said I wasn't welcome in her house, 
My wife said then neither am I. I've heard through other people that, to this day, 4 years later, she's still talking crap about us to everyone she sees. BTL. DR. B went from bridesmaid to restraining order. My aunt and uncle got caught banging in one of my grandparents spare bedrooms. Not a big deal until you find out that their respective wife and husband were the ones that found them. But beatings ensued, police were called, and thankfully that was the last family get together ever. I sent them thank you cards. Germans of Reddit, what is the family environment like when a grandpa or other close relative used to be in the Nazi regime? Is it just ignored? My grandfather was part of the Hitler agent, but only joined, when not joining was sorta of punished, like weaker grades and such. When he was 14, in 1945, he was ordered to the front line, where the US troops were approaching the Rhine, about 30 kilometers from our hometown. When he arrived, he saw that the massive artillery wasn't firing at an angle, to cover more distance, they were firing horizontally over the river. When my grandfather realized this meant either death or becoming a pal, he deserted and ran the 30 something kilometers home, with two of his best friends. He's been very vocal about his disgust with the regime to me and my sister, his fear about being caught and hanged when he was running for his life from the front. He's only opened up in revenant years, as he's getting older. So technically he was part of the regime, but an unwilling one. It's not often spoken about, because it hurts him a lot when he does, so we let him pick the moments. My grandmother was a small child during the war in Germany. She used to tell us the story of playing with her dolls in her room and looking out the window down the barrel of an American tank with five soldiers inside on top of it. My great grandmother was so excited the Americans were there she cooked them a full meal while they bounced my grandmother on their knee and played. I can't imagine being a small child and having a tank roll upon your house. Not German, but my great grandfather was a lieutenant in SS and fought in the Finland war. He was a huge butthole according to my dad. It was never talked about to my dad and he only found out when he was doing some research for a play he was writing last year. He found a book titled List Number, one of suspects of major crimes against the country, Norway, in a bookstore and looked up our last name for fun. He had a long talk with his parents that day. I think most people had an idea that something was going on. My grandpa was a child at the time and they lived near Hadama, where they killed mentally disabled and burned them. He says that people knew sort of what was going on, but that there was a big blanket of silence. He once told me that he asked his father why thick black smoke came from the hospital in the city. His father slapped him for the question and told him not to ask about it anymore. Related. The fiancé of my grandmother was shot two weeks before the liberation during work for the resistance. He was recognized by soldiers, arrested and shot during his escape. My grandmother never talked about him, only once, but continued to visit his grave. She is 94 now, so her health prevents her. She would otherwise still go. That is pretty heartbreaking. I worked with a woman in her 60s whose family arrived in the UK from Germany in the early 1950s. She'd have been about 12 at the time I guess. It was common knowledge in her family that her mother had been part of the war effort back in Germany. It really interested me, and we spoke about it at length. There was a common acceptance that no one would ever ask the parents about the war and particularly the role that her mother had played. At the time of her mum's passing in the late 1990s she still had no idea what it was that her mother did, other than it being non-military but within government. She talked about it all with a real sense of inherited shame, so I would imagine that many families still in Germany with similar ties feel very much the same. That's about the same relationship I have with my grandfather about Nam. He was in Vietnam but the whole family knows how hellish it must have been so we just don't talk about it. Different reason for not talking but the relationship is about the same. Austrian here. My grandpa was born in 1916. He wasn't a member of the NSDAP, but like so many others he ended up in the Wehrmacht and fought in Russia. He never talked to me or my father about it, except once, when he was basically on his deathbed. It was obvious that he felt the need to teach the young generation about the horrors of war, but he was too ashamed for most of his life. He told me about finding a bunch of massacred 18 year old Germans somewhere in Russia. They had their throats slit and their cut off penises in their mouths. 
His commander then told his squad to retaliate by burning the nearby villages to the ground. He told me about his dear friend, who talked too much about some secret new weapon or whatever and was taken away and never seen again. The war ended for him when he lost a leg during battle and was captured by the Russians. He said he was beaten regularly by the prison guards, but he knew that being captured meant that at least he would survive. So, in a very twisted way, he seemed thankful for being imprisoned by them. And finally he told me about that memorable day, when he was free to return home to Eastern Austria and found out his wife has been repeatedly raped by the Russian occupants. Seeing that old, usually funny, one-legged man completely break down in tears was the most influential moment in my entire life. He passed away about two days later. I have chills just thinking about it. Ex-girlfriend's grandfather was SS. When I met him, he said to her sad he's British. But at least that's better than Jewish or Muslim. My grandfather was a pilot in WW2. He didn't do it because he was a Nazi. He wasn't. But because one day a consultant came into his school and said, I beg each and every one of you to join the Air Force. And not because you have to win the war. It's already lost. Everyone knows. But if you don't join you will be forcefully put into the Vuxterm. We all know what that means. So my grandpa joined the Air Force. After flying for two weeks he was shot down and taken into jail by the Brits. He always told me how very nice they were, having him and his friends jump into the river and swim down a few hundred meters to take him out again and let him run up to make him jump in again. What a great game so much fun I was 12 when he told me. It took me a lot of time to realize that this was no great fun. It was torture. He would never admit to it though. After all he lived through it so you don't have to. My grandpa dreads talking about the war. And even more he dreads talking about his father who, although not an active Nazi, was a huge admirer of Hitler's. He once met him apparently and raved about it to my dad when my dad was 6 years old. That was the last time my dad has ever heard of my great grandfather because my grandpa was not gonna have a Nazi around his kids. To this day my grandpa is very ashamed of his father and will never speak of him. I only know my grandpa cut him out because my father told me. My grandpa will turn 90 this year. He's of good health and I hope he'll make it through many more years. He's a wise and blunt man when it comes to Hitler and the war. He once told me a very memorable story. People that claim not having known about the Holocaust are liars. We all knew. We knew something was happening to the Jews. They just disappeared. We knew it had to be horrific but we were paralyzed by fear. People don't lie because they want to look better. They lie because they can't stomach that they didn't do anything. Nobody can stomach that. We let them die in those camps. We knew. We were just too cowardly to stand up and fight for our own neighbors. Our lies are just the protection from our own darkest and biggest regret. Edit. Thank you everyone for complimenting my grandpa. I will let him know. Someone requested an AMA with him and I will do my best to make it happen. Many people suggested I should sit down with him and make him tell me everything he remembers and I will do that as well. If it turns out to be something worth publishing I will do my best to make that happen. It's gonna be my grandpa's 90th birthday on the 26th of December. I bet he will be delighted to hear how many people are interested in his story. My opa was born in Bremen. And was lucky that he wasn't forced to join the military at first because of his trade, electrician. They needed him in town. The story he told me about his conscription involved he and his best friend, my uncle Helmut, who married his sister, participating in a soccer match against the Hitler Junjun. As he told it, the government would put on promotional matches against local teams to drum up patriotic support. He and the local club were told by their coach to lose, because there might be problems if they won. They, his team, thought this was nonsense, and proceeded to beat the youth by a point or two. After the game, their coach was in tears, and told them that if they hadn't signed up for the army yet they should do so immediately. My opa realized how serious this was and signed up, ending up assigned as an electrician to the air force. His best friend, Helmut, was woken by soldiers entering his home in the middle of the night, frog marching him to the army barracks and being immediately entered into the infantry. Helmut fought in North Africa on the opposite side of another relative of mine on my father's side, an Irishman under the Brits. Apparently they got on well at the wedding. Opa ended up eventually being assigned to an AA battery in the Battle of Berlin. 
and had a 12 year old Hitler youth put a gun in his face when Opa told the children he had been put in charge of that they should abandon their post and make their way west to surrender to the Americans rather than to the Russians. He convinced 5 or 6 kids to leave after a shell destroyed most of their position, and killed a number of the kids, and they spent most of the night crawling through ditches and drainage pipes to eventually get to some allies they could submit themselves to. Only 2 other people in this group made it with him. Two of the ones that left decided they would make a last stand for their country by attacking some soldiers with a pistol each. Opa never really liked the depictions of the Nazis in American films. He didn't like they were usually painted entirely as evil, as opposed to the frightened, coerced children young men they often were. He never really talked about the war that much, except the rare times he was drunk, but always spoke about the Nazis with venom and as if they were an occupying force in German life. I think he felt they stole the country from regular Germans and drove them into war and madness. I realize now that my basic memory of Opa is of him sitting at the kitchen table chain smoking cigarettes and drinking coffee well into the night. He never slept well, while reading trashy Harlequin romances. I hope they brought him some solace. I don't know if this counts since I live in the states but I'm related to Erwin Rommel, or the dessert fox. Whenever the situation gets brought up about him we don't really shy away from it. We just try to think while he may have been part of it at least he was part of the 20th of July plot to kill Hitler. It's odd to think that afterwards Hitler promised him his family would be safe if he killed himself. My family kind of goes on because of the mercy of Hitler on them after the assassination attempt. You're probably lucky in that if any high rank of the German big namers is going to be respected, it's Rommel. Not that he was a sin but he was a soldier through and through. But for Nazism and I imagine if he'd had the chance, after Nazism. I'm an Italian American and my grandfather is an unrepentant fascist and pro-Nazi. He was born in the late 20s, and was too young to join the war. He was active in a fascist youth group, however and his older brother fought in Ethiopia and was later detained in Auschwitz. When he was 16, Mussolini's regime collapsed and the Germans occupied the Italian peninsula. My grandfather's family is Calabrese, meaning they lived in the tip of the peninsula. One day during the final preparations for the Allied invasion, he and his buddies were up drinking in the hills. They went into a cave where they used to hang out, and found a wounded American paratrooper hiding inside. My grandfather's friends ran off to get him some food, the Americani were already being heralded as the coming liberators of Italy by word of mouth. He ran off and told Wehrmacht authorities, and the poor soldier was captured. He was awarded a low ranking iron cross for his efforts. I don't blame him for how he thinks. He came of age in a world where heroes wore swastikas, and in his advanced age, it's come back in full effect. My grandfather is not a good man. He has severe personality issues to this day, and often extols the Nazis and their virtues at family gatherings, much to our mortification and disgust. Still, he has lived in interesting and dangerous times, and produced a lifetime of fascinating stories I'll share some more if you're interested. At least he did not kill the paratrooper right then and there himself. At this point, basically everyone who was old enough in World War II to be more than a low ranked private insert equivalent rank here or who lied about their enlistment age is dead. There's a good few of the former Hitler youth still kicking though. That being said, I highly recommend the documentary World at War. It was made several decades ago, and thus contains a whole bunch of interviews from people of that time period. I would also recommend Sins of Our Fathers, which is pretty much exactly about what the OP is asking. Well we are aging our way out of that particular problem right now. Somebody born on the day the Nazi regime surrendered would be 71 right now after all and there are fewer and fewer people left who live through the Nazi rule as adults. To have actually voted for the Nazis in last election in 1933 one would have to have been 20 at that time and thus born in 1913. The number of people still alive who fit that bill is increasingly small. Of course it wasn't always that way. When I grew up there were a lot of more people around who actively lived through those days. Generally it wasn't brought up without good reason and those reason were few. Thanks to the way the Nazi regime worked, very few people managed to avoid participating in the system in some form. Membership in organization like the Hilter Youth were mandatory if you fit the criteria and for other organizations it was strongly encouraged. 
Many ended up joining the party not out of conviction but because they just wanted to get on with life. So for the most part after the war there were very few people who were not sitting in glass houses and able to throw stones. Almost everyone still alive had been to some degree a part of the system. The few who honestly could have held up their own past as an example of what everyone should have done largely refrained from that sort of thing. For specific events it varied quite a bit. For example when we learned about the fate of the synagogue in town in school the general consensus was that it hadn't been locals who burned it down during the Reich's crystal natched and killed the young man inside. It supposedly had been some youths from the big city who did it. That may or may not have been true, but of a very convenient story for everyone to go along with. It doesn't help that very few people came out entirely unscanted from the whole thing. My grandmother lost her first husband in the war and my grandfather spent some time as a POW in Russia that he never quite mentally recovered from. So this whole era was never something you could bring up in casual conversation. Yeah, this sounds a lot more realistic than some other answers. With each generation, we begin to become more apathetic to the horrors of the previous generations because we lose the people who have actually lived through them. I lived in Germany from 82 to 86. I lived in a basement apartment of a 50 year old lady and her husband. Her mother also always came by. They loved me. So when her mother came by, she would come downstairs to get me so we could drink together. The entire family claims that the Russians and Americans conspired to fake the death camps. They do not believe that that ever actually happened. They are still very pro Hitler. I never argued or said anything negative to them when we discussed it. We were probably about 150 miles east of Dachau, so they may not have known about it. The town was very small, maybe 800 people. There may not have even been any Jews in the town, so they may not have even seen anyone deported. But I cannot believe for a second that they did not hear things or know things. I happen to have a great great grandfather whom I know nothing about. I only heard of him and what he did through my mother who heard it through her father who still knew barely anything besides that he was a general. He never went to America however his wife left him with his kids to America before the war even ended. Illegally I believe. Since then I've been trying to find out more about him but it hasn't really been working. My family has literally removed his face from many 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 If you have documents and they literally blanked out the name with whiteout, you should be able to somewhat view it by holding the document up to strong light and looking through the back. Or you can very carefully scratch at the whiteout, it's usually pretty brittle. You may also be able to get his name from public birth records if you look up your great grandfather. My SOS granddad was conscripted in the Germany army at the end of the war. As he was only 17 18 in 1944 he would have grown up under Hitler. He knew no other world. After the war he and his wife jumped onto a boat to the other side of the world. Once they arrived they stopped speaking German. He never spoke of his war experiences until a few years before his death and only small things. His own children didn't know he was in the German army until much much later. I looked up the timing and where he was from. He would have experienced the Russian invasion. I understand why they never spoke of it. From what my so said the man never showed any racism towards anyone. Ever. That is pretty good going for a man who spent almost all of his formative years under Hitler. My great grandfather was a doctor during the time of the Third Reich. He always was very clear about how the Nazis were the biggest catastrophe that could have happened to Germany. Also, he claimed that he wouldn't join the Nazi party, even when the Ars Tecuma, something like Medical Council Chamber or Medical Association, tried to pressure him into it. After he died my grandmother and other relatives went through his stuff and surprisingly found a membership certificate that stated that he was a member of the party after all. Even though he told everyone his whole life that he never was. That kinda shocked everybody and it left a bitter taste in many mouths. Since nobody was able to ask him why. Maybe he was threatened? Maybe he just joined because he thought they were doing the right thing? Nobody knows, and we never will. It really struck a chord in me when I heard because he was a very smart and educated man. I never saw a flicker of racism or xenophobia in him. But I always wonder why he lied about it. Maybe it was shame. I have no idea. He likely had no choice but to join. Professionally if he didn't he likely wouldn't have been able to practice. So he joined, kept it quiet and spoke his true feelings. 
I had a great grandpa who was a spokesman for Hitler and from what my dad says went to his grave with some deep secrets, and had a great great uncle who was an SS officer. It's completely ignored. You don't bring it up. Sadly some of my family on that side are neo-Nazis and see nothing wrong with what took place. Others are ashamed but will not talk about it. My grandpa was 15 when he had to go to war. Goes without saying that it wasn't his own decision at this age. He was imprisoned by Frenchers in 1945 and was able to flee back to Germany till the war was over. It was anyway a really depressing time for him and I didn't ask a lot about the time because I had the feeling he moved on. My grandma was still a child at the end of the war so she didn't partake in any way really. But my mother does say that she never really talked about it and generally doesn't like talking about inconvenient topics which she associates with her having lived in that time. My great grandfather was as Nazi as one can be. He supported Hitler in every way. He worked as a doctor in a race hygiene hospital, where he castrated and euthanized disabled boys and he left his pregnant wife with three kids for another woman in the middle of the goddamned war. Did I mention he killed cats for fun? Because he was scared for his guinea pigs? Everyone in my family, who's old enough knows about this, yet his children, primarily from his second wife, glorify him. They only talk about his great accomplishments as a father and grandfather and never on mention what a monster he was, even though they're not racist or anti-semitistic at all. Oh, and two years ago we found out he had another two sons with his secretary. They got happily accepted into the family. People are weird. This is going to get buried but I will write about it anyways. Born in 1923 my grandpa lived through most of the time that the Nazis had a significant impact on Germany. He grew up on a small farm in East Prussia near today's Kaliningrad and was a member of the Hitler Youth. When I joined our local boy scout group, he talked how much fun he had at the Hitler Youth and that it should teach me a fair amount of manly skills. During his time in the HY, he was approached by somebody from the local Nepola, a state funded boarding school. Because not only was a very good track athlete and boxer but also really liked the things they told us at the Hitler Youth. But his father wouldn't let him go. They had a farm to take care of and his help was needed year around. At multiple times he told my dad that he sometimes is very glad he did not go. When the war broke out, his father was drafted and put to use. He stayed home and took care of the farm himself. In 1940 his father was injured and sent home for good. Once they were assigned some force laborers, he decided to join the army or so he said, because this is where things get fishy. My grandfather always talked about his time at the Wehrmacht and where they trained and what he did for fun with his friends there. There were so many times he would tell me bedtime stories about his time in the war and my dad used to listen to the same stories oh. Did he tell that story again but it was always him being part of the regular army. Just a simple soldier doing his duty fighting. Nothing about being a Nazi. However, his portraits in uniform that we found after his death showed him in clear SS uniform and when we looked into the places he went for training, all those places turned out to have been mainly SS training sites. He must have been an SS member, but it goes to show that, in retrospect, my grandpa was definitely not very proud of his time there. I still remember him telling me not to join the army when it was my turn to get drafted for military service as nothing good has ever come from war and destruction. We never really thought about him possibly being in the SS since he never really exhibited any ideological thinking. In fact he was very critical in regards to the Nazi era, reflected well on current issues and he even joined me on a protest march against neo-Nazis. TL. DR. Grandpa liked talking about the Nazi time, but not about him being a Nazi. <laughs> Looks like I'm late. But my opa's story is interesting. My opa was a Pole, when his village was invaded by the Germans. All men and boys were either conscripted into the army or sent to pre-army work camps where they learned how to be soldiers. My opa's father was the village mayor, so his family was given preferential treatment and awarded SS status. Both of opa's older brothers, as well as his father were SS men. While opa, who was 15 when the Germans invaded, was sent to one of the soldier camps. His brothers were killed, his father was injured, and Opa basically learned to hate the war. When he turned 18, he refused to become an SS man and was instead sent to the Russian front line, which I'm told was somewhere in the Ukraine at the time. During his time on the front line, he was injured by shrapnel twice, 
returned to the front line twice, and on the second return, he shot himself in the hand so he could stay away from the war. Upon his third return to the front line, he disbanded from his group in search of the Americans. His war, he decided, was over. He snuck around the countryside and eventually came upon an American camp where they took him in as a POW. He suffered through poor living conditions, but he ultimately survived. When the war ended and he was able to return to his mother, the reunion pictures, his mother, father, and three younger siblings, show him looking gaunt and malnourished, scarred by the war and likely trying to escape PTSD. He immigrated to Canada in 1948, leaving behind a pregnant fiancé who later died during childbirth. After immigrating, he traveled the Canadian prairies helping as a farmhand. He met my Oma in the late 50s and by 1962 my mother was born. He never spoke about the war to his wife, or his kids. His life in Canada, I think, was supposed to be an escape from those memories. From what I understand he fell into alcoholism sometime in the late 60s and that persisted until his first stroke in 1998. When I was 8 years old, he had to quit drinking and started to open up, to me specifically, about his war experiences. As a naive kid, I had lots of innocent questions. He told me lots of stories. My relationship with my opa was to this day, the most important relationship I've had in my life. He was such a central figure to my upbringing. I hold his memory in extremely high regard. He died in 2008. I still wake up crying when he shows up in my dreams. Serious, Redditors who choose to cut off your family, why did you do it? I was always the one to make contact, try to talk. One day I decided I was going to wait for them to call me this time. They never called. It's been 8 years. I feel this in my soul. My mom moved 6 states away when I was 5. And if I didn't call her I never got a call. After 20 years I've stopped trying and she only ever communicates on Facebook. Then she acts all proud of the way we grew up. No thanks to her. I didn't totally cut them off but I moved across the continent and refused to visit. My mom said that if I wasn't her child she would want nothing to do with me so I don't initiate contact with her. I just don't see the point in maintaining a relationship where you don't want one. I'm your mom now. I'm real proud of you for all your accomplishments and you're gonna do really good things in life. Thank you for existing. Less than half an hour after my mother died. My great aunt told me I had no right to be in the room with her body because I am a drama queen who never truly loved my mom. I was 15 years old. That's not something you say to a kid who lost her parent. I am way better off without that toxicity. I am lonely, but safe. Sorry for your loss. I hope things have gotten better. My immediate family cut off pretty much every member of my father's side of the family, with the exception of three people. Several years back, while my father was dying, we desperately needed help. Some financial, but otherwise just emotional support. We were losing my father, but they didn't care. Some of them even went out of their way to screw us over. And when he was nearing death's door, one of the worst of them called us up, all worried, about arranging my father's last rites. First off, everyone knew my father was not religious and didn't want that. And second, you didn't give a dang about him before. But now you're worried about his immortal soul frick off. We actually had to warn the care home about this relative potentially sneaking in a priest. And we also spoke with a close friend who was a priest himself. Who wrote said relative a letter that, politely, told him to frick off. They can all rot for all I care. They made me ashamed to share the same last name. You can always do what my friend did when his dad died and change your last name to your father's first name. The dad side of his family were all trailer trash who beat animals so he changed it. Posted on another post. Serving in Iraq. Family didn't bother telling me my mother had died. Found out via an email two weeks after funeral. Time I got home. They had divided all of her possessions. I got a brown envelope with four pictures of her in there. Got up and left. Never went back. Married a girl from overseas. Try to get her a visa. My aunt finds out. Sends letter to embassy stating that I'm an unsavory character. And that the marriage was most likely a scam. Visa denied. I'm now leaving the country. Jesus I would have set her house on fire. You have the restraint of a god. And I am so sorry this happened to you. I can't imagine even remotely what that would have felt like. 
I haven't talked to my mom in over 9 years now. It sucks but I've been much happier ever since I made that decision. When I was growing up she was always the type that instead of providing any sort of encouragement she would embarrass you as motivation. She would point at homeless people and say that's what I would become if I didn't work hard enough. I remember when I was playing piano she would tell all her friends that she wanted me to know how to play so I could at least play on the streets for money. When I had a recital at school there was a piece that I kind of blanked out on so I had to do that thing where you backtrack in the song and play it really quick to remember the song. It was obvious that I messed up though. Afterwards my mom told me she was so embarrassed that she wanted to leave. The breaking point is when I was trying to apply for dental school. I was having a hard time with the DATS, MCAT version for dentist, and I had just taken it and got a bad score. I came home not feeling so great and my mom asked me how I did. I told her not that well and she looked at me and said, see, I knew you couldn't do it. She forced me to sign up for it again and lo and behold I did poorly again. This time I wanted to just avoid any contact with my mom so I made sure to leave the house before she woke up and came home after she went to bed. During this time I had gotten a speeding ticket but I paid it off in secret. What I didn't realize is that a bunch of driving schools will mail you brochures to take their course to get the points off your license. My mom found out and she called me immediately. What my mom didn't know if that I was in the car with all my friends and I put her on speaker when she started screaming. What are you doing with your life? Just drop out of school and bag groceries. Stop wasting everybody's time. Ever since that day I decided to just not talk to my mom. There's actually a bunch more to the story but fast forward 9 years and I've completed dental school and in my last year of orthodontic residency. I hear from her co-workers how often she brags about my accomplishments and how proud she is of me. Some part of me wishes our relationship was better but I always go back to thinking that it was too little too late. My mum was a bee. She was emotionally abusive and neglectful my whole life. She only had kids for the benefits. My brother was 18 months younger than me but because he was taller she would often mix up our ages. She often mixed mine and my sister's names up. I hated her for years but I finally cut her out when I was 19. My dad died from cancer just before my birthday. In an argument, when she tried to convince me my sister is a prostitute, she's not. My mum used my dad's recent death to try and hurt me. I walked out of her house and haven't seen her since. I'm 24 now and when I meet new people I just tell them both my parents died. I'm adopting everyone in here with crappy parents so hello. I'm a guy but I'm your mom now. You're doing real good in life and I'm proud of you. And if you need anything you can message me. Take things one step at a time. I don't speak with my mother. She allowed me to be abused by her boyfriend when I was little. She was messed up on pills. Whenever she left the house I'd beg her to take me with her and she never did. I tried to form a bond in my adult life but she kept bringing up the past when I told her not to. And then I cut all ties. My mother is a drugged out, alcoholic, W monger that basically had zero positive impact on my life. Didn't have the courage to cut her out of my life. Fear of triggering another suicide attempt 3 to date. Until I had kids of my own. I love my children and they will not be witness to the same things I've seen. I feel no remorse. And anyone else living with such toxicity in their lives, there is no shame in cutting ties with family members. Protect yourselves and find a way out. Hi there. I'm adopting everyone with crappy parents so I'm your mom now. I might be a guy but I'll be the best dang mum ever. You're doing real good and I hope the babies are doing okay in school or preschool daycare home. I'm really proud of you for being such a good parent to those little ones. Okay message if you need anything have a good day son daughter. My grandmother casually mentioned that she hoped my sister had a miscarriage because the baby's father is Mexican American. I never saw or spoke to my grandmother again and my nephew just turned 16. I am fine with everyone in my family, except for my grandmother. All my life she has been a bully towards me and most of the other members of our family. Just a few examples. When I was 14 and very slim, she told me it was only a matter of time before I became fat and ugly and told me how much thinner, prettier she was when she was 14. When I was 18, I got a tattoo. She drank two bottles of wine and shouted at my 6 year old nephew and his little friends playing outside that all women with tattoos are trash. 
We had a huge family dinner one year, the only one where everyone has been able to come, and it will never happen again, because we had some deaths in the family. She convinced herself that she was only invited to take care of the chick. Uh, no, and wouldn't eat, wouldn't let my grandfather eat, and threw a fit about not being able to sit close to my bra. So May of 2016, I finally graduated from college. I invited all my friends, a few professors, and family, including grandma. Well, my nephew was hitting some of my guests with a balloon sword, which was annoying, so I took it from him and told him no. My grandma completely loses her crap shouting at me for being so nasty and mean then she follows me inside i'm cutting my professor some cake when she unironically curses my firstborn child it was super embarrassing and she apologized later said she was sorry that she loved her grandson so much lol so i just haven't talked to her since the rest of my family guilts me about it a lot but it's not like her being such a b is anything new they all hate dealing her but they put up with it because we are related frick that. TLDR. My grandmother cursed my firstborn child, not as a joke, but 100% serious in front of my respected professor. A pox on all your houses. My parents were drug addicts my entire life. My father is a narcissist. I cut my mother off first after she stole 5k from me. She OD'd. My father weaseled in again. I am working on re-establishing my boundaries with him and limiting our time together. Sometimes your parents didn't do their best. My father is a narcissist. My father weaseled in again. Please tread lightly. <laughs> parents divorced when I was 2 and my father was still pretty active in my life. His mother watched me while my mom worked till she had a stroke when I was 6. Shortly before that, he had gotten married to this vile woman who made it clear that I had no place in her family. Numerous things happened when I was left in their care the worst among them was being forgotten all day in a pool and had after around 8-12 hours my ginger butt was blistering and oozing. My skin is crawling thinking about how much pain I was in. This gave me a horrible case of agoraphobia which I still have to manage today. Despite literally have a legitimate fear of direct sunlight my father would only take me fishing and berate me on my own interest. Comics, movies, art, and music. Why couldn't I be more like my brother who was chasing pee and playing football? After a while I start to try to force distance between myself and my father. I stop taking his calls, quit engaging with him. My half brother, who is no relation to him only strengthened. When my mom and step dad moved to California they moved my grandmother out of the home that her husband, my grandfather built in Houston to a third rate nursing home. Gave my childhood toys to his wife's grandson. Classic TMNT, Legus, G.I. Joes, and sold everything else of value. She died in 2006. I was only told that the woman who helped raise me had died via my mother's younger sister who was married to my father's best friend. We haven't talked since. He had a heart attack in December. Found out from my brother. He told me to sit down and made me promise not to cry. He went into his bedroom and pulled out my blue suitcase that says going to grandma's from my childhood days staying with ma and I started crying like a bee. He told me to open it and my TMNT toys were inside. Broken mangled and destroyed but I have them now. They'll put up for safekeeping. My brother told me that after the heart attack, my father's wife decided to start spring cleaning and my brother pulled this from the garbage. So, my father wasn't physically abusive. But he fricked over everyone in his family keeping his sea of a wife happy. Dang. I never understood what goes on in people's heads when they try to pull crap like this. Dad owes me $10,000 plus. A while back my mom showed me all of these statements of the account that was holding money I was to be receiving from a lawsuit settlement. Continuous in out transfers of funds to his personal accounts. I was freaking naive to think he'd ever do something like that when I was coming out of high school and going to college. I used to have a really good best friend whose family wasn't well off, scraping by but couldn't get ahead. We won them one of those local news surprise home renovations, got him a new computer and some money to start college. His mom blew it all gambling. That was the last we associated with them. Have not completely cut them out but are on the verge of cutting ties with my family. My wife is very family oriented and we are struggling with it. But the main reasons are they are violently unstable. Man children. 
Father recently said he was going to kill himself in front of one of my siblings as well as her children, his grandchildren. Mother got a legal weed card and is baked 24 stroke 7. I am pro legalization but she cannot function. The reason we have began to split off is because we are discussing having a child and realized we would not feel comfortable allowing them near our future kiddo. They were a piece of crap. Played a big show for decades about how good they are for my grandparents. They were loaded with money and all the siblings wanted a piece. So lots of drama ensued. Alliances were made, rivals made, backstabbing etc etc. They figured if they showed that they were the best kids that they would get a chunk of that money. They despised my mother cause she was the only one who spoke Polish and my grandparents were Polish. Yet none of the kids wanted to learn the language. My grandfather as he got older gave up in the English language and went back to his native tongue. Which further drove a conspiracy that my mother wanted all the money for herself. When the final act came, my grandfather being on his deathbed, they were rubbing their hands waiting for the inheritance and wanted to see who was the favorite. Well he passed and after all the drama only 10,000 was passed out of the supposed 1 million. The whole time over the span of 3 decades the money was funneled mostly to my gold digger aunt. She smiled in the end and said oh well. The last nail in the coffin was shortly after my dad passed. Before his body was cold the whole family wanted me to turn against my mom and abandon her to side with them. Instead I took my mom's side and the two of us got each other's back and never talked to them ever again. It's been 8 years. Most of them regret what they've done. And they realize family should have each other's back and not worry about money. Frick them. They were over the top controlling. Needed me to pick up the phone 4 plus times a day, visit 1-2 times a week, and constantly criticized my choices. Heaven forbid I missed a phone call, then the triangulation and guilting would start. But that wasn't enough. It wasn't enough when they gave me panic attacks. It wasn't enough when they made my husband weep in his workplace. It was finally enough when I had my little boy, and was watching them manipulate him. Telling him that he would never be as cool as they were, and that he owed them for every little thing. When he was just 2 years old, it made me realize just how purposeful it was, and how damaging it could be. 3 therapists told me to leave, but I didn't listen. I needed that mama bear back up to get out. The last therapist told me in saving your son, you might finally save yourself. After my parents died my only remaining grandparent decided that I must be mega rich and that she wanted some of the money. I wasn't mega rich. It's just that her definition of rich encompasses literally anyone who has a job instead of living by benefit fraud. She teamed up with my drug dealing uncle, fresh out of jail for armed robbery and GBH. And they stalked me for about 2 years. Phone calls at all hours, often threatening in tone, turning up to loiter outside my building following me in the car, that kind of thing. I was young and scared and didn't want to incur the wrath of the rest of the family by calling the police, so I just kept my head down and rode it out until I was finally able to move and escape from them. I was a bit sad to have to cut off from the entire family, as there were a few relatives I liked, but they were all too close-knit and fricked up. The only way out was alone and completely. I realized I had to cut off my dad to protect myself emotionally when I was really young. He used to say he was coming to take me for the weekend and then never show up. I'd still be sat there with my bags packed hours after he was supposed to come. My mom would eventually ring him and I'd hear them arguing over the phone in the other room. Then she'd put me on the line and I'd pretend I wasn't crying while I listened to his excuses and apologies. Eventually he stopped even pretending he would come. It was the most painful and humiliating thing I've ever lived through. I was a really outgoing kid and slowly this just killed my self esteem and confidence. Years after all this he tried to rekindle a relationship but I wasn't interested. I had a strong suspicion it would end in tears. Mine. Not his. And I wasn't up for round 2 of all that. Because a simple text from my father would send me into a full blown anxiety attack. A message from my mother stresses me out. But not as badly. I shouldn't feel so unsafe from the people who are supposed to have been my biggest safety net. But I do feel unsafe, and I deserve better than that. I lived in the same city as them less than 20 miles away. For 4 years. And they didn't visit or even call me for the entire 4 years I lived there. If they don't want to see me, I'm more than happy to oblige them. No use wasting effort on people that don't see you as a priority. 
because they barred me from even visiting after I came out to them. Among other things, they called me mentally ill. They said they were glad I wouldn't be having children. They said that God would punish me for my lifestyle choices. And they blamed me for making them respond like that. You deserve a better family. I hope things have gotten better for you. I cut off my dad back in 2011 because he basically stole my car. It was under his name. But it was a gift to me that I'd been driving for about a year. It was a piece of junk and cost me more than it was worth. But it was still unexpected to one day not have wheels. He took it and changed his number moved. He and I had never had a great relationship though. We'd gone through years of not talking at a time ever since I was like 12 so I shrugged it off. I'd see him steadily for 1-2 years and then nothing for a year or two. He, and my stepmom who had originally introduced him to hard drugs in the first place, was sent to jail a year later for a drug related pistol whipping someone outside a 7-eleven and, since we have the same name, I got a ton of texts from people I hadn't spoken to in years thinking it was me. At that point I decided I really didn't need that kind of chaos in my life so I made no attempts to reach out to him. He got out of jail and got clean. In 2016 I had planned on reaching out to him on his birthday in September, because I'm a sap but when he didn't come to my grandmom's funeral that same year I decided not to bother. My grandmom was on my mom's side, but she'd always loved him and I thought that was his chance to be the bigger man and reach out to me in my time of need, and he didn't. Then he got back together with my stepmom which further cemented my decision to not reach out after all. Then I heard that even though they were together that he was still clean. So a part of me still wanted to. At the end of the day, I forgot to message him. His birthday was a week past before I realized it. Can you blame me for forgetting? I hadn't spoken to him in years. I decided I'd just wait until his birthday in 2017. Because I didn't just want to message him on some random date. I wanted to reach out on a day that would have some meaning. And maybe a part of me again thought he'd reach out to me first since my birthday was in April. He died this past June, and I'm filled with regret every day about not trying to reach out to him. Don't regret it. You did what you think was right at the time, and that's all it matters. After they kicked me out age 17 for being not Catholic and not straight, wanted to get in contact again when I'd straightened out, got married and had a daughter, with the words we will give the child the moral guidance you never could because of your demons. Never spoke to them again. No regrets at all. Much happier now. Frick that noise. I'm your dad now and I'm real proud of you and I hope you're having a real good life. You message me if you ever need to. The father's side of my family is full of extreme alcoholics, drug abusers, child molesters, and yes, as of recently, a murderer. I cut off contact with them years ago and chose to live my life without that kind of crap in my life or in my child's life. I don't have to see it, worry about it, waste resources trying to help them when they don't want to be helped, etc. I can go on living my life with the values, ethics, and morals that the other side of my family raised me with, live my own life, and build a successful, socially contributive household of my own, and have done so. I haven't cut them off but I've limited my interactions with them as of late. They're very judgmental people. They like to overanalyze what other people do and how those actions don't fit into their views or beliefs. They think I'm lazy despite the fact that I have a full time, six figure a year job and routinely have consistent side projects and have had work published in international magazines. They think my career as a graphic designer is a bit of a joke and a phase and when I eventually crash and burn I'll need to come back to their family business. They've implied I'm the reason the family business is failing, which it's not, they just use that as a manipulation tactic. I have a very small stake in the business and I don't work on it full time. They constantly criticize things I do and talk about me behind my back. For instance, I heard from several extended family members how disappointed my parents were when I chose to hire a realtor to sell some property as opposed to selling it myself. They, again, considered this a lazy move and that I was crazy to pay a realtor to do it, never mind the fact that I easily made that money back just doing some freelance on the side. 
you know, actually spending my time doing what I'm good at rather than bumble through the real estate process that I know nothing about. It's made me realize that I really can't tell them anything without being judged or criticized and that I've lived a fair portion of my life consistently worried that they'll disapprove of the decisions I make, so I just made the choice to stop revealing details of my life. I still see them consistently, but it's getting more and more awkward to be around them. I'm hesitant to even talk to them about movies I've seen since I know they judge me for spending money to go see new movies. Basically we can talk about the funny things my kids and my dogs do and that's about it. Because one person can only cry so many times trying to help. It's futile as frick. I don't care about them and I'm living a much happier life right now. They don't see that. I was always the black sheep of the family because back in the 80s and 90s I was a typical inner city skate punk. While my parents had no problem smacking me around, it was how they were raised, my extended family all sort of teased me and picked on me for the way I dressed and cut my hair. Never mind that when you're a teenager your appearance is pretty important and since I didn't have much money to buy stylish clothes I'd punk up thrift store clothes in order to not feel like a bummy hobo. Once my mom died suddenly when I was 18 I pretty much had no reason to stick around so I took off. I still see my dad on occasion and he seriously mellowed out to the point where he's a different person. I'm actually pretty resentful because when I was a kid he'd beat the crap out of me for every little thing and now he's a typical whiny old man. He's made a few apologies for being hard on me when I was a kid and while I forgive him. Because by now I feel like the abuse I suffered made me hard. And that came in handy when I was in the army I don't really feel any need to get any closer to him. I also have a younger brother and sister. I won't go into details about why I don't spend any time with them but for the most part my sister has her own life and is a lot younger than me and my brother is the type of guy who stopped growing up when he was 16 and is basically the same. Underachieving loser who refuses to take any responsibility for his actions. Because his mom died and everyone knows him for that. At 40 as he was at 17 and only ever calls me when he's feeling sorry for himself or needs a handout. I haven't talked to him in years. Meanwhile I've pretty much had to claw my way to where I am and since the only person who ever gave me any encouragement and has always been there for me is my wife I live for her and my kid. I don't hate my family but they never did much for me and now I have my own life. Sounds like you've been lucky to make an amazing rebound with your own lovely family. Good for you. That's huge. Employees of IKEA. What are some of the worst family meltdowns you have seen? Not a meltdown, but one of my favorite stories to tell people. My now husband and I were driving to Ikea, about 3 hours away, and this was at a point in dating when we were starting to get serious. On the trip, I found out his middle name was Riley, and I mentioned how it could make a very cute girl name. He was completely aghast and was very firm in stating that Riley is a boy's name, and had been handed down in his family for over 5 generations. I tried telling him that it was starting to change over to be a girl's name now, much like Ashley or Quinn. He thought I was crazy and was adamant that people do not name little girls Riley. We lightheartedly argued the point for a good 15 minutes. We finally get to Ikea, park, and walk in the front door. 5 feet in front of us a little girl of about 2 goes running by and her mother is chasing after her, saying Riley, get back here my husband just looked at me defeated and said, shut up. Our firstborn girl was named Riley. We carried on the family tradition, just in a slightly different way. I have a son named Quinn. I know how how he feels. Seems like I hear about three girl Quins for every boy Quinn. I once went through the couch section and overheard a couple arguing about what color couch they should choose. Being the idiotic dolt that I am I pointed at a pink couch saying hey that pink couch looks great the couple proceeds to look at me and said f% dollar sign k off and walked past the section while arguing. Never have I ever stood in days for so long. Never have I ever stood in days for so long. Should have just owned it man. Stand proud. My sister not self aware. At all. She yells and screams at her boyfriend while he ignores her and does his own thing in the store. All of this because she demands that he stay right by her to look at every little thing she points out. Five minutes later when she's done having a one-sided fight with him she's basically drehumping him in public to compensate for the behavior. He also ignores this. And that's when it starts over again. I can't go to Ikea with them anymore. It's too embarrassing. 
She will scream my name through the IKEA restaurant because she's too lazy to take a step aside so that she can see everyone in the restaurant and find me. She doesn't care if this bothers the other costumers. Jesus Christ. No offense but your sister is my personal nightmare. This thread made me realize why my marriage works. While we might argue a lot, we go to Ikea about 4 times a year, but have never set foot in the showroom. We shop online and measure to confirm. The kids go to grandma's, while I get dropped off at the warehouse to skate around on the cart, get what we decided on and eventually bring it out to the car, while she's waiting in the parking lot, just stick to the warehouse. It's very peaceful seeing all those nice, grey rectangles of endless possibility knowing you'll be leaving happily with only three of them, for the price you already budgeted for, but go to warehouse pick three random boxes, Ikea like a pro. Not a meltdown or an employee, but, I was in an Ikea when a random lady grabbed my hand, pulled me over to the bookshelf section, and told me all about the number of books she hoped to fit on one, color scheme of her bedroom, etc. It was pretty weird but I gave her my best advice on bookshelves and made it back to my boyfriend, who was about 20 feet away looking at me with should I come save you eyes, Ikea is a weird place man. R.I. don't work here lady. I've been working at Ikea for the past 2 years. It made me lose hope for humanity. I have so many things. I've had someone try to return an entire used kitchen that was for his mom's house and the mother passed away. Guy was freaking screaming at my manager. Had a couple get into an argument about the size of the furniture and whether it fit into their car. By the end it escalated to who has the louder voice. It's endless lol. Just don't remember any off the top of my head. I mean you can technically return things even if they've been used, and even without a receipt, as long as it's been bought in the last year, I've even been able to get price adjustments, but yeah, trying to get a refund on an already installed kitchen is probably a bit much. Seen a dude in the car park of the Newcastle Ikea cram a frick load of furniture into his Ford Focus, wife stood next to him freaking screaming at how much of an idiot he is for buying so much. How they aren't going to fit in the car now, and how he is putting all this furniture together alone because it's his freaking stupid crap we don't need. Husband replies, no you won't fit in the car now and drives off. I once say a young couple argue, the girl needed a new mattress, but the guy didn't want to carry it or get a cart for her, they left without a mattress, I love my job. To be fair, unless it was a twin, carrying a mattress is not a one person job source, moving my queen mattress in and out of two separate second floor bedrooms in two years while in college. Pretty much Ross with his couch. Currently in Ikea making the most of my complimentary cups of tea. The couple at the next table over just had a brilliant argument about whether or not they could put a TV in their bathroom. He thinks it will fit. Wife girlfriend thinks it's the stupidest freaking idea ever. They don't need it. It won't fit and if he wants to do that then he can move back in with his mother. And he keeps asking her to give him half of her dame cake. After about 5 minutes of whining she told him if wanted some he should have bought one because apparently he always does this. I might follow them around the rest of the shop to see what else happens. Update. Couple didn't kill me for stalking them. I just ran out of battery. I followed them for a while before I found it way too awkward the caffeine from 4 complimentary cups of tea kicked in and I needed to get out of there. I left them in soft furnishing textiles. He was playfully throwing pillows at her to get her attention. She turned around and said, scarily calmly, I know that you think you're being funny, but you're not. So if you're going to act like a child I will treat you like a child. Start behaving like an adult or we'll leave now and I'll take away your Xbox for a week. He pouted and marched off, muttering under his breath. Ikea Bristol lady, if you're out there, I hope he grows up and also I really like the peacock blue pillow you bought. Also to answer the many questions about free tea, I live in the UK, and if you're an Ikea card holder you get free tea and coffee Monday to Friday. Updates on updates. Dudes, I get it. Some of you find it funny to throw pillows at your SOS, but ask yourself 1. Did they find it funny 2 and 2? Did they repeatedly ask you to stop? Go buy 3 dame cakes. Find couple. Loudly proclaim how you always have so many extra snacks you can't possibly eat them all. Seduce man. Get TV in your bathroom. 
this was my IKEA family meltdown. My then boyfriend and I were getting our own place just after college. Until then, we had both been using twin beds thanks to student living spaces and sharing a single twin was proving uncomfortable for two adult humans subjected to California summer temperatures. To fix this issue, off to Ikea we went. Things start off okay. We start with lunch, admire the living room couches, move into kitchen wares, all so far enjoyable fantasy, and then we reach our destination, bedrooms. A sea of beds and a variety of price points greet us with brightly colored duvets. An experienced furniture purchaser I start scanning the price tags to narrow the options. I bring him to an attractive affordable model I think matches some of our bookcases. And this is where the trouble starts. See up until now, I didn't realize exactly how bad this man's fear of decision making was. He stares at the bed incomprehensibly for literal minutes, refusing to talk about it. Eventually it is discovered that buying a bed means committing to delaying graduate school, never moving to the east coast, and having children with me. I don't understand that logic and request explanation which is slowly and tearfully given. We spent 3 hours in that IKEA and left with nothing. About a month later we went back and again after several hours bought that exact bed. He never went to grad school or moved to the east coast. We also did not have children and broke up a few years later. He took the bed. No filmmaker could put any more symbolism into that one bed if they tried. Going to be buried, but my friend used to work at the IKEA across the street from the Mall of America. Some background, the MOA has an amusement park in the center. It's currently called Nickelodeon Universe, but for the first 15 years or so it was called Camp Snoopy. In 2006 the MOA lost the Snoopy franchise and rebranded to the generic The Park at MOA before they acquired the Nickelodeon sponsorship. A few days after they changed from Camp Snoopy happened my friend was working at the daycare at the IKEA. She heard a child ask their mother, what happened to Snoopy? The mother responded without missing a beat, Snoopy died. Cue the child bawling her eyes out inconsolably, to the point where they wouldn't let the mother leave the child at the daycare. As a bonus, my friends and I started and still refer to the amusement park as Snoopy Memorial Park. As my wife and I were finishing up and walking to the registers, the couple in front of us was somewhat quietly arguing about something in their cart. Finally it came to a head when the female in front of us said something along the lines of, I just don't understand why we aren't getting the lamp. And at that point, her partner lost it. He turned to her and quite loudly yelled, I will snap your neck. They didn't get the lamp. They did however give my wife and I a line to say to each other in jest every time we're at Ikea. Pro tip, shop on Ikea's website from the comfort of your home. Then, after you have decided, go and check the items out in person. This way, you already know what you're looking for and will have a much better time. This is why I own 7 Kallax shelves. Was about 12 years old at the time. A glorious bygone era it was. Frosted tips, holographic pencil cases, and punked was all the rage. So one day at Ikea my dad's looking at Om was going down a line of them appraising each one individually, so I hatched the genius scheme to hide in one of his upcoming armwheels and scare the living bejebus out of my old man. Waiting patiently echoed within my Swedish pod the illuminated crack of light slipping through the aperture between the doors darkens. That means it's showtime. I brace myself for maximum spookage, the door quickly swings open I let out a loud BAA which is promptly silenced by the sight of a little hijabed woman confused, hurt, rightfully so, out of her wits. Two male companions arrive and begin berating me, I think, in Arabic while I stand frozen in shock with father nowhere in sight. I make a hasty escape in the middle of this stern talking to, eventually coming across my family elsewhere and remaining very, very quiet for the rest of that day. I'm not an employee, but I once saw a kid tantrum cause his family moved past the kid room with the slide equipped bunk bed. He followed up by breaking a display television. It was too much of a scene for me so I continued on to the end to buy some cinnamon rolls. You know what they say, if you can't get it, might as well destroy something of equal value or higher. Bet they were proud. My mum had one. We'd gone to Ikea hunting for kitchens and decided to get breakfast first. We queued for ages for a breakfast, 
before someone informed us that we were in the wrong line and had to switch. Just after we moved they closed the breakfast line and refused to serve us. My mum just sort of lost it. She complained to the manager about the attitude of the staff and the lack of line signage and then started crying. She must have looked crazy. What no one would have known is that we'd been looking at kitchens to distract ourselves from the death of my grandma earlier that week. Every little thing was setting my mum off because it was all still so raw. The manager was quite sympathetic when my mum cried, even though she had no idea why mum was so upset, and I was always really grateful for that. Sadly, I've had my own IKEA family meltdown. When I was 19, my then boyfriend of 3 months, who I'd already had a terrible relationship with, moved to Europe for college. Being that I was 19 and dumb, I thought it was a good idea to meet him there. He would be living with his aunt, and so his mother gave him a budget for some IKEA furniture for his bedroom. We'd gotten only as far as the chairs. He'd picked out a computer chair, a reading chair and a couch before he'd exceeded his budget. I pointed out this was unfair to his mother, and meltdown number one occurred as he justified the need for all these places to sit. It was scary, so I cried. People stared. It was awkward. When we'd finally made it to the cafe, I couldn't read the menu because it was in the native language. I asked him a few times, hey, is that chicken and he just wouldn't respond to me. I just figured I'd eat later, but when it came time to order and I didn't know what I wanted, he absolutely blew a gasket. This somehow turned into an argument about how I needed to eat better so I could be strong enough to carry his children. Buddy, the freak. This caused me to cry even more in utter confusion and fear I was unsafe in a foreign country with a monster. We sat the table together as he loudly berated and shoveled food into his mouth and I just bawled. Eventually some people approached us and asked if everything was okay, but I couldn't understand or speak to them. Easily one of the most embarrassing public moments of my life. On the bright side, I made it home 3 months later, and he now works in sewage back in the US. I'm really glad you got out of there alright. He sounds like a nightmare. LPT. Go backwards. Eat first. Avoid the showrooms. Go through the household goods and buy your furniture in the warehouse. GF and I do this all the time and we are happy as clams with bellies full of meatballs. I worked at IKEA for 2 years in Smaland, which is the free childcare IKEA provides for shoppers. The worst part of the job was turning away families because their children were not potty trained or met the height requirement. Some families were understanding, most were not. I'll never forget, one family was making a huge screaming fuss because I was not allowing their 2 year old to enter because she was under the height requirement. The father pressed his daughter against the wall so roughly, using his hand below her neck to push her head up, practically choking her, trying to change my mind. I had to walk away because at that point, the child was crying from being so uncomfortable. Smelland was one of the most terrible retail jobs I've ever had. Parents can be ruthless. Ikea must be where you go to see how strong your relationship is. My, now ex, wife at the time and I were already having regular fights. I'll admit, I'm really a typical guy in that I have a limit for browsing crap in a store I'm not interested in. Add crowds and it's doubly miserable. However, I'm usually able to put on a good face and just grit my teeth through it. But that trip to the IKEA store, I swear we were that couple with the woman walking 10 feet ahead of the man and we didn't speak the whole 2 hour trip home. First date is to pick a restaurant to go to, go to IKEA, build some IKEA furniture, play Uno, and then play a ranked game of League of Legends. See how crap works out. You could set up a 24 hour television channel that streamed nothing but continuous meltdowns from around the globe all day and all night. Going to Ikea should be used as a test for young couples to decide how well they can handle stressful situations. I hope someone was following us yesterday, because I went to Ikea in Westchester with my husband and mother-in-law. Note, this was not my idea. We were looking for a reading chair for me. Mill kept suggesting very industrial looking designs, with either very low arms or no arms at all. I was trying to explain that her suggestions did not make for comfortable reading. My Mill's response was, you read too much, you should read less. I was speechless, for about 2 minutes. Then I basically turned into Gollum, and his whispered, what the heck is wrong with you she proudly answered, a person who doesn't read.
You know if you were to mention the hours she wastes watching Real Housewives or whatever classifies as trash TV nowadays that she would be horribly offended. At the one I work, somebody brought a pet pig into the store, and it chat several places. But we get a lot of crap in the fake apartment's toilets. That brings on employee meltdowns. Oh man, not a family meltdown. But here's the story of the craziest woman I've ever had to deal with. We have an Aziz section, which is full scratch and dent or discontinued items we sell at a discount. This lady, C, walks up to my, ah, uh, cash lane with two plants and before I even get to scan them, she says those are both $4. Thinking that's a bit suspicious, I pick them both up. One is clearly marked as an Aziz item. The other has the standard barcode. I try to explain to her that only one of them is $4. The other will be full price. Her face immediately turned red, and she demands I call back to Aziz. I call down there. They come up and confirm that it's not their product. So she wants a manager. Call a manager. M. And as soon as M gets there, this woman starts berating her. See your cashier won't give me the right price for this plant. I'm running out of patience and I don't have time for her to learn to do her job right. I knew how to do my job. She'd just clearly never been told no before. Em I'm sorry mom. Rules are rules and I can't give you a special discount. Is there anything else I can? C's face turned almost purple and I legitimately thought she was going to explode. I don't care what you have to say. You're about to lose so much business I shop here all the time this place will close down without my money. Teach your little bee cashier to do her freaking job right or I'm never coming back. M she's doing her job right. You need to leave before I call security. Ah. Close your lane down. Take a break if you need to. We won't be helping this lady anymore. See you can't do that. She could and she did. I'm just glad I had a manager who didn't take crap at the time. But this woman had a total meltdown. TLDR. Crazy lady wanted a cheaper plant. Didn't get her way. Turned purple. 8 years from selling kitchens at Ikea, I've seen and heard a lot. The worst meltdown that comes to mind is about a couple who were there getting a new kitchen for their burnt down house. They were both feeling a bit off, a bit strange, while being polite and communicating properly they seemed drifted. A bit further down our dialogue when I asked about what method of delivery they preferred I found out their garage and car was burned down too. In fact, everything they owned was burned down. I asked how that happened and the guy answered in a strange but loving tone. I married this wonderful woman. She was a foreigner and it turned out her own family. Father, had done it. Their body language and the tone of their voices said a thousand times more about the situation they were in. About the fighting they had done to be together than I am able to express here. It was both sad and beautiful. I adore that couple. Still hope and wish them the best future. Ikea can bring out the worst in people. Girlfriend woke me up the day after a company drinking event. She said let's go get breakfast. In my mind I am thinking fantastic I'll get some food in me then head home and pass out. We drive. To Ikea. In the back of my mind I am thinking okay well good cheap breakfast works for me. Nope. We proceeded to get a cart and walk through the store. My brain still not fully functioning starts going okay well we need like one thing. She'll just write the code down and we will get it real quick. An hour later, my hangover has gone from hey, there's a little bit of construction in the back to we are going to need to drill underneath the slab. I am balancing off the shopping cart like an old man with a walker trying to keep it together while stomach is doing handstands inside me. Now I will say that I love my soap but we had stopped at every display to talk over about it like it was museum art and I was starting to lose it. So is having a grand time looking, touching and sitting on things. She's trying to get me all pumped for all the stuff we are going to have to build. Little chairs, desks, bookcases. I am not even focused on any of it. No food in me. Slow walking around shouting children. PA speakers blaring about curtains. We finally get to the couch section and she is taking her sweet time choosing the right fabric. She's holding up swatches and asking about different colors and the statement that it would make about us. At this point I am thinking I'm going to die standing right here after I crap my pants in Ikea talking about couch colors. Can we grab food now? A. It's past close to 10.30 let's just wait until lunch. To be clear my civil composure was being held together by the thought of food and now I just learned that was not happening. 
She holds up a swatch of pale golden rod and asks for my opinion. The veins in my head feel like they are pumping molasses. Golden rod? Are you kidding me? You choose the ugliest color of a list of 10. How did you even manage that? Get the dark blue and let's go already. People around me audibly gasped at me. Did you hear what he just said to that poor woman? ETC. Etc. My girlfriend looks at me and goes what the frick is wrong with you? I just want some eggs and bacon. I am on the verge of tears. My girlfriend looks at me and I could see that there is a sudden moment of clarity in her eyes. Wait. Are you hungover? I am past hungover. I'm dying. Get the couch in whatever color you want. Just bury me on the way out. OMG I had no idea. She took me by the arm and led me out. I got two egg muffins. Two hash browns. Coffee and a 5 hour nap. We later ordered the couch for delivery with dark blue covers and a second golden rod cover. My GF and I have a rule no Ikea on hangovers. One time a lady came up to me freaking out that Ikea had discontinued her favorite cookie. I had to call the manager and she just yelled at him that her therapy dog had just died and she needed that cookie. Another time a Russian family was asking for queen sized sheets, but with the accent it sounded like Gavin. I just stood there dumbfounded as they repeated Gavin over and over. My favorite has got to be the family of five ranging from maybe 1550. Incredibly vocal Middle Eastern family that had almost zero English skills between the them. I had the unfortunate task of informing them through a translator that the bunk bed they had ordered was in stock. But was in the air in the self-serve area and not currently available so they could come and pick it up after close. Wheel that wasn't good enough for them and all five of them threw themselves onto the ground and just flat out began wailing. To keep this in perspective, they had ordered this bed at 2055. The store closes at 2100. They had to wait an extra 10 minutes maybe 15 minutes to get their product. When they see that wailing doesn't seem to be working for them, they begin to take items of other people's trolleys and taking them outside to their car all while yelling at the top of their lungs. At this point security are with them trying to calm them down. 10 minutes into this, the bunk bed has been brought down and is ready to hand out. Even after being informed that their order is ready, this family carries on for another 30 minutes and security was forced to call the police. 10 minutes later, the police walked through the door and the family immediately stopped everything they were doing and just simply walked out of the store and left. It was an interesting sight for us and a pretty terrible experience for all the other customers there at the time. Not an IKEA employee but I was at the IKEA in Wembley in London and basically ended up wandering through the shop behind a mother and daughter. The mother was probably about 80 and the daughter about 50. They were bickering with each other the entire time and in the worst possible place. The section with the stacks of wine glasses in the aisle. The mother said something and walked off. And the daughter grabbed her by the hair and dragged her backwards. They both fell into the big display of wine glasses and smashed the crap out of it. Didn't seem like they got cut up but I moved out of there quickly as they were still fighting so didn't see the end result. What's the most fricked up thing a family member of yours has done? NSW. My grandfather had my grandma change her will to cut out my mom two years after my grandma had developed full blown dementia. If your mother had decided to fight that one in court she likely would have won. There's a reason why wills tend to mention being of sound mind. Last week my mother and sister were visiting. Fear both pieces of work but they've never done anything that crappy. One day I go out shopping with my sister, who is 13, and we got talking about her dad, my former stepdad. When we stop by a candy store, I tell her don't you hate it when Jason, her dad, takes his tax. My sister looked at me really funny and asked me to elaborate. I tell her about how he used to demand 15% of everything I got when I was living with my parents while they were married. 15% of my Halloween candy. 15% of my money from my lemonade stand when I was 9. 15% of my tip and wage from my waitressing job when I was 18 on top of paying rent. About $700 a month. He even demanded my food when I made dinner. I have specific allergies so I needed to eat separate food from my family. These aren't the only things he's done but they're the most cheap. My sister was shocked and I realized he had only ever done it to me. It was quite jarring to realize I was the only one he was targeting. 
My brother stole $500 from my mom yesterday while we were away. She pays his car insurance and has looked the other way when he's taken stuff before. But this was her final straw. I had a cousin who was addicted to H and his parents were always doing stuff to bail him out and keep him from being homeless. One time they put down a deposit and paid rent for a furnished apartment for him. He ended up selling the furniture for drug money. Another time they rented a mobile home for him and couldn't figure out why the water bill was so high. It turns out he was charging his homeless friends $1 to take a bath shower and that was going on pretty much around the clock. Mobile home bathhouse. I'm imagining a line out the door lol. Not as bad as some of things on this thread but this was a dong move. I asked my uncle, who is a mechanic, if he could install new belt on my Honda since it would be much cheaper than taking it to a shop. He told me he would do it for me. I just had to buy the parts. Bought the parts, took the car to him and came back a few hours later. He told me he was finished and I paid him $200 for a $450 job, which was dope. A few days later my cousin texts me a picture of some parts that his dad asked him to put on eBay. They were all the parts that he said he installed on my car. My cousin thought they may be from me since he knew what job his dad was doing for me. I called my uncle and he denied it firmly. I still had the receipt and matched the barcodes to the ones on my receipt. So they were clearly mine. My cousin, who is also a mechanic, installed them for free for me a week later. Uncle still denies it and kept my $200. Don't talk to that pleb anymore even if he's around at family gatherings. At least your cousin sounds like a good guy. One of my uncles borrowed $20,000 from my other more successful uncle to start a business and refuses to pay his more successful brother back because he's got so much money already. The more successful uncle refuses to sue him because that's not what family does, but they are no longer on speaking terms. One of my uncles is out of the family now for this. Borrowed from our great grandmother, declared bankruptcy, then said, I don't have to pay her back. I declared bankruptcy, disowned immediately. Frick that guy. My grandmother had five sisters. They were all super close. One of them got cancer. This was in the 1960s. They all decided not to tell the daughter who was 12 at the time of the sick one that her mother was dying because her father had just died a couple month prior. So the daughter just woke up one day and the mother had died. I mean it's not completely fricked up but it was a bad decision I feel. My brother threatened to kick in my front door and kill me. Six mo pregnant. My husband and two year old son. He had stolen the phone I had purchased for my dad and I turned it off. He wanted me to turn it back on. M is bad, kids. I have no aunts or uncles anymore because of M. It's literally ruined my entire extended family who were mostly successful medical or education professionals. All I have is my immediate family. My aunt didn't remember which of my three brothers I am. M is terrible, kids. My cousin killed his brother and father. He got up one morning, had a glass of milk. I guess it was soured, because he said they were trying to poison him. He shot my uncle in his bed, and then went after Robert. When police arrived, he tried to say that Robert had killed his father and that he took the gun away from him and killed him in self-defense. However the only place on the gun they could find Robert's prints were on the end of the gun barrel, like he had tried to push it away. He is currently doing life without parole in the Oklahoma prison system. If anyone wants I will link you to his prison page and the articles from the shooting. This sounds like a case of mental disorder to me. My aunt married a guy a few years back. He was a pathological liar and lied about literally everything for no reason. Tried to convince everyone he was in the military black ops and that there was no record of him because it was secret he also did a lot of other fricked up stuff like threatening our family members and friends. And other things. He actually even tried to kill my uncle and my two cousins. But got his butt properly beat down with a baseball bat. Long story short, my aunt ended up divorcing him later cause he was an all around freaking C, and he came to her house, rang the doorbell, then shot himself in the head with a handgun right on her doorstep. Real fricked up. Well I have an uncle who always beat his wife, so on one occasion she got into her car and ran him over multiple times. Broken leg, foot, ribs, collarbone, etc. He ended up staying at my dad's house for something like 9 months while he recovered. They got back together. 
He told her well you finally got me back your bee. Jesus. That's almost like a true love story. I was abusive right up until she ran me over a couple times. Love that bee. A cousin of mine put a switchblade to my throat when I was about 8 to scare the crap out of me. It worked. Almost literally. This happened to me as well. But not to my throat. Just out menacingly. He claimed if he stabbed me he couldn't get caught because our bloodline was the same. Young me was quite terrified. My cousin went on to serve time for various crimes. My cousin tried choking me to death when I was like 6. He also loosened the bolts and put me coffee table, told me to lay under it, and hit it so it fell on me, killed the nerves in my two front teeth and had to get them pulled out, but now that fat bastard can't walk and has to wear diapers while spiraling into depression, so it all turned out well in the end. My sister who ran away from home once put my cat in the refrigerator when she was in high school. What kind of psycho crap? Not a family member, but my sister's ex fiance really charmed everyone in the beginning. We thought he was the sweetest southern gentleman you've ever met. Fast forward a year later, he got my sister into drugs. They lost all their money and moved in with my mom. He would abuse my sister and my mom. My mom wasn't really a hoarder, but she had a lot of things in her home. This man was a neat freak, so while my mom would be at work, he would clean out the house by throwing her belongings into the trash can outside and setting it on fire. These belongings included my late father's things that were sentimental, like his clothes. Also any and all picture albums of our family growing up. He threw away and burned everything. I have no pictures of my dad or myself from when I was younger anymore. We had two dogs. One was a German Shepherd from when my dad was alive and one Chihuahua we adopted. He took the Chihuahua and threw her out the window on the side of the road. He let the Shepherd loose out of the house and called animal control about a stray dog. I think that hurt the worst because we had those dogs for years. My mom loved him in the beginning so she gave him my father's wedding ring because they were going to marry. He pawned that for money. He also sold my laptop for drugs. I blamed my sister for everything for a long time. I let her borrow rent money once, but little did I know that she was going to use it for drugs. She ended up leaving him, but they do have a beautiful child together. That's the only good thing about the whole situation. He isn't always will be a monster. God dang. That's freaking nuts. My dad bought his two brothers a house in India to live in. Both have two kids so it's a pretty big family so a pretty big house. All he asked for return was to leave one of the rooms open for us so that when we go to visit, we have a room to call our own. Less than two months after buying them this house, they tore down the room and both took parts of it to remodel and make it into their own. When my dad went to visit a year later, they wouldn't let him into the house and tried to give him $50 to go stay in a hotel. Both of these families are pretty scum. One of the kids stole my grandma's jewelry and sold it for drug money. They also collectively stole my great uncle's pension checks and gave him nothing. They put him in a small room in the attic even though he begged them for a bottom floor room because it was so hard for him to walk. Another son stole a visitor's wallet then threw it onto the neighbor's yard. In India most house have roofs that are open and connected. Cops were called. It was a huge thing but in the end nothing could be proved. One of the sons basically stole a store from his cousin. The cousin's family owned this small novelty shop. The son worked there for a long time. The family that owned it went away for vacation for a week and when they returned all the locks were changed. Cops came and couldn't do crap because the paperwork for the shops was misfiled originally and the family didn't technically own the deed. They couldn't afford a lawyer to fight the case. My family hasn't talked to these two brothers and their families in a few years. I went to India a month ago and heard of all these stories from other family members. There is also a pending case where my dad owns a plot in India that we think the brother's family is using to do some fricked up crap. My dad hasn't been to India in 7 years because he is just so sad to visit because of this crap. The funny thing is that my dad would have done anything for them if they didn't frick around and steal so much. They both would have been so much better off if they weren't such scum. Sounds like a Punjabi family. Family drama is Punjabi families can be insane. My sisters used to pretend to put me in the oven. Apparently, I was only about 3 at the time. I don't remember. They put mine in a wok and seasoned me. 
My sister lied to a social worker to have us investigated for child abuse and neglect, leading to our foster child being removed from our home even though the claims were found to be false. She also spread the gossip that we were being investigated which hurt some friendships. That foster child she got removed, not only did she mess up that baby's life she also destroyed my other kids because one day their sibling was home and the next gone with no warning. We had prepared them for foster kids leaving but this foster child was within weeks of being adopted by us. To this day my sister maintains that she did the right thing because we didn't need more kids. My girlfriend's cousin molested his own sister when he was 18 and she was around 8. He went to jail for a year or so and now has to register as a sex offender. His mother makes her daughter hang out with him. Seriously, the bee makes her daughter hang out with the man who molested her because they are a family. What the freaking frick. Thanks guys. I've wondered what to do about this. I'll make a call tomorrow. My grandmother said she needed a place to stay one night due to issues with her housemate. She slept on the couch for the next 10 years. Made no effort to get her own place despite having a very good retirement income and still working part time as a nurse. Loved to hit the casino though. You should have told her to GTFO after year 1. Or at least help her out. For example, pay first month's rent on a cheap apartment. My family is a fricked up collection of people. But one of my cousins is the soap opera star of white trash. My cousin married his M dealer. Promptly got her pregnant. Resulting in her sixth kid, the first five had been taken away by the state and were being raised by her parents. Within a year of the baby being born, they get into a drunken fight. Cousin's wife tries to drive away with baby. They drunkenly physically fight over the baby as she tries to get her in the car. And the car door gets slammed into baby's torso, breaking two of her ribs. Cops come. Wife has sobered up and cousin hasn't. She blames the fight on him, not revealing how badly the baby is hurt. Cousin gets arrested. Three hours later she gets arrested driving drunk. Baby in the car. They discover the broken ribs. Baby get taken away. Her parents couldn't take another kid. So the baby ended up getting adopted by one of my uncles and is now 10 years old and healthy. My cousin and his wife are still legally married but separated. He wants to move across the country, but he's still on parole and can't leave the state. Last I heard, his wife has had two more kids, both from different fathers. The state has one, and her oldest son has taken custody of the other. As soon as he turned 18 he got custody of three of his siblings to help his aging grandparents out. My cousin is still an addict, off M, but still a raging alcoholic. He lives in a tent on various family members' backyards. And I avoid him since he is still welcome at family gatherings where his biological daughter is also present. If this is ever mentioned in his hearing, he has 40,000 reasons why it's not his fault at all. He has stolen from all my aunts and uncles for drug money, sexually creeped out me and every other cousin over the age of 15, caused serious personal property damage with a fire, and my family insists on sweeping it under the rug every time. During my father-in-law's unexpected sickness and death my brother-in-law got greedy. While my wife was staying with my Phil at the hospital my bill proceeded to loot my Phil of as many of his earthly possessions as he could load up, and took it all to his house. My wife has never been allowed to go through these personal possessions. After moving my Phil to hospice, to cover his tracks my bill proceeded to tell the entire family that I had stolen large amounts of money from my Phil. There was no truth to this whatsoever in any shape form or fashion. And in fact, after my Phil's death my bill embezzled the estate funds $50k from the account. My wife ended up suing him and he had to return half. This act tore the family apart, all because of greed. It's been 6 years and I think about it every day, still. I'm dreading to see the fight that will ensue when my in-laws pass. My two sills will both be horrible. Mind you they both have more money than they will ever need, but dang. You'd think they are going to starve to death tomorrow. My dad's a consummate prankster. His crowning achievement, in college, has since become illegal in two states. Step 1. He and several buddies go to a Cadillac dealership at 5 o'clock on a Friday. This was before credit cards and automatic banking. BTW. Step 2. They wrote a check for the asking price of one of the shiny new models, and drove off with it. Step 3. They sell the car at a used Cadillac dealership across town. 
Step 4. The used dealer calls the new dealer, and tells him that the car was sold with the dealer plates still on, and the Prissa tag still in the window. Step 5. New dealer figures that the check the kids wrote is going to bounce, so he calls the cops. Step 6. My dad and his friends spend the weekend in jail. Step 7. The banks open Monday morning. The check doesn't bounce. Step 8. My dad and his friends sue the dealers and the state for wrongful imprisonment, and get a settlement of thousands of dollars more than the cost of the car. Basically, the plan was to seem as shady as possible and get wrongfully arrested for it. They had the lawyer set up before they bought the car. Dad used his share to pay for his, and another friend's, tuition for the year. The state passed legislation protecting themselves from this kind of thing within the month, and the state to the immediate north adopted the law as well. 30 years later. Holy crap. That's like legitimately genius. My mom married a convinced child molester and would bring him with her to work. A job where there were unsupervised children. Grandparents on my dad's side passed away and left me. My brother and my cousin 20,000 pounds each in a trust fund to be given to each of us as we turned 21. I was the first, and my father refused to give it to me. I should mention at this point my parents are divorced so my dad lives elsewhere, as apparently I hadn't earned it. Fine. What ifs? Then my brother turned 21 last year, and again refused to give it to him. But since my brother is a hard working individual the haven't earned it excuse wouldn't fly thus he revealed he had in fact spent all of our money paying off debts he owed for reason unbeknownst to us. Neither of us have spoken to him since then even though he has tried once to contact me via Facebook. He claims he was within his legal right to do this. By the way, we took it up with a solicitor and it turns out no, he wasn't. It's fraud. Unfortunately our family doesn't have the money to take him to court so not much we can do. Oh and to top off this crap pie, my cousin turned 21 earlier this year and his father, my uncle, has pulled the same stunt my father has. Truly wonderful men. My sister talked my ex-husband into suing me for full custody at the exact moment I was unable to contest it, properly because I had just suffered a huge loss at month 9 of my pregnancy. She also fired at his case with lies to make me look like a terrible mother, while simultaneously patting me on the back and consoling me that he was a terrible man. He didn't win, but the case made things contentious for us for years and made it impossible to grieve with my now husband, because I was in survival mode to make sure I didn't lose my daughter. How horrendously crappy. I'm sorry this happened to you. After reading some of these, I've realized mine isn't so bad. But my uncle is Cecil Russell. A lot of what he's done is public, but he's done so many more terrible things. The two big ones are that when he was still just my aunt's swimming coach, when she was a teenager, mind you, he got her pregnant and destroyed her shot at the Olympics. He also participated in the murder of a man over steroids, something he continues to sell to this day, but was only ever charged with hiding the body. My mother told my younger brother that his father killed himself in jail. Not only did he never go to jail, he's still alive. She's a real crap bag. While suffering from postpartum depression my mother set me on fire when I was 26 days old. We don't have a relationship but that's from the rest of my childhood not this. Postpartum is brutal. My mom, already not the most mentally stable individual, not crazy, just has depression and anxiety, got slapped with it hard when my younger brother was born. My grandma ended up taking me and him for a month long visit to her house so my dad, who's thankfully a doctor, could get her some help. Thankfully, she was still an awesome mom afterwards, just on Simbolta. P. Hum. So tough to decide. There's my grandmother who divorced my grandfather and married his brother, making her my great aunt. There's the other grandmother who showed up to my grandfather's funeral drunk, dressed like a $2 prostitute cussed out the family, and nearly knocked the casket over. There's the three convicted child molesters, and then dozen non-convicted child molesters because it was a different time then and that kind of thing was kept in the family. There's the stepfather that tried to murder my pregnant mother. There's the cousin who shot himself in front of his kids. There's the guy who was caught fricking a goat. There's the guy who would give his kids booze on fishing trips to keep them quiet. All the kids were five and under. My sister, 
then 7 years old, tried to kill our newborn brother because she was jealous. So, take your pick on which one is the most fricked up thing. Hey Uncle Father Oscar. My dad's wife told me that he was dead when he wasn't. I only found out months later when a relative said he'd recently had an operation and was doing well. I emailed her and said I believe dad has perked up a bit she didn't respond. My uncles came by the house after my father died, got my mother, their sister, drunk, and then took a lot of my father's things with her drunken permission. Things that were meant for my brother and me. Those bastards. I never speak to them anymore for that reason. Got early Alzheimer's father to sign a loan putting the house up, then purposefully defaulted, resulting in mother to be evicted. Mother and father ended up in separate homes, and died a year apart. Took all the insurance money and left the grave without a stone. Special place in heck. I dunno why, but this is the one that made me cry. Poor old couple. My father, who didn't want me and tried to get my mom to get an abortion, used to kidnap me and try to leave state with me while also trying to brainwash me into loving him. He never paid his child support, but when he did he'd come pick me up for the weekend and would drive as fast and as far as he could until my stepmother would catch on and stop him. The entire trip out he'd tell me about how my mother has never loved me. No one has, no one will and that everyone in the family tries really hard to forget me and the horrible shame I brought on the family for being a bastard. He would tell me all about how my mom was a 40 year virgin who was terrible in bed. How she should be lucky he allowed her to have his child. How I should be so lucky that I look like him and not like a dirty beaner like my mom. Which never made sense to me, she's native american not mexican and he knew that so I never understood the racist comments because I didn't know what a beaner was at the time. He'd also scream about how much he hated me and wished he could take my birth back but then he'd turn around and say I was the love of his life and that no one will ever love me as much as he does because he is my dad so I have to love him. Found out many years later that it was the H&M talking. For many reasons I never told my mom about these trips and she never found out. My mum started bleeding badly when she was 8-ish months pregnant with my sister. Dad refused to take her to hospital. Sister died. My mum was diagnosed with leukemia. Dad went for sole custody. Mum passed. Dad moves in with her maid of honor. My mum's best friend of 30 years, who was executor of her estate, proceeded to drain what my mum had put aside for me. Eldest brother was looking at incest p and my dad hit me for telling on him. As the sole female sibling in the house, I was terrified but apparently it's just what boys do. Force me to sleep in a room alone with said brother for weeks to prove nothing would happen. Things happened. Father stabbed me in the ankle when I was 9. Kicked me out when I was 14. Lied about my other brother dying. Went so far as to put a plaque up on the tree he had supposedly crashed into. Eventually found out brother was alive. Father said he was hoping the incident would be enough for me to kill myself. When he kicked me out of home he told my entire family he was hoping I would get raped. I did. So twice my father put me in positions where I would be sexually assaulted. There's more but suffice it to say when I had my daughter I swore I would never be anything like him. And I'm not. I freaking won. You did win. What's the most shocking thing you've ever caught a family member doing? When my sister was 14, I caught her taking naked mirror selfies with a sharpie in her butt. I bet writing with sharpies was awkward after that. Was on holidays with my sister and our room only had one bed so we shared. Anyway, I opened my eyes the morning after a big night out and the first thing I saw was a random guy staring at me. He didn't speak English and at this point I had a million thoughts run through my head. Had I slept with him last night who tf is this guy is my sister still here am I even in our room where tf am I? And then she sits up and goes. Oh. Yeah sorry. We had nowhere else to do it. My sister had a one night stand in the same bed as me while I slept. I wish I could sleep as good as you. My cousin went to swingers parties three times. I know it. I saw her there. I walked in on my now ex-girlfriend and my brother sitting on the couch, she was on his lap and they were making out. I was furious. My gran attempting to have me assist her in shoplifting. She was trying to put her items into my messenger bag. No, she didn't have dementia. And no she wasn't poor. She had plenty of money. She just wanted me to help her steal some crap. Thug granny. 
I think everyone in my family has caught me beating off at some point. Stop doing it in the living room. My brother booty dancing to the family guy theme. I'm not even going to ask why. Ugh. I'm so embarrassed to even type this. But, I caught my dad masturbating to pee after my mom went to her night job. I was in elementary school and got out of bed to get something to drink and saw my dad sitting on his knees on a towel on the floor and jerking off into a washcloth. I quickly got my drink and when I came out of the kitchen he was back in his robe on the couch and watching TV like nothing has happened. We never talked about it. At least you didn't catch a glimpse of his vinegar strokes. I once walked in on my brother wearing mine and my sister's underwear and clothing, strutting his stuff. When he turned around I seen he also had a hard on. He was 14 it was weird. I burned the things. Should have let him keep them. This isn't really shocking, just sort of creepy. I had written an explicit journal about things I had done with my so when I was living at home and my mom found it in my dad's bedside table after I moved out. Innocent explanation. He found it and moved it somewhere he thought your mother wouldn't look to avoid both of your parents accidentally invading your privacy, then forgot to throw it out. I mean, it's probably the other thing, but... Visited my aunt and uncle and caught my cousin smoking pot when he went to the bathroom next to the guest room and had the vent on for about 30 minutes and didn't flush when he left. Essentially I told him he sucked at hiding it. My brother was using the internet through his Wii when he was about 12-13. Left his MySpace open. Being the good, nosy sister I am. I creeped through his messages. Saw he was kind of flirting with a boy on there who obviously wasn't a young boy. Was asking to meet up with my brother. Brother was questioning his physical orientation at the time. Anyways, this kid was friends with a bunch of little boys and I alerted my parents. Good thing I did. Dude was some old but perv operating from a church computer in New Mexico. Freaking great job. I walked in on my sister freaking my friend in high school. That was awkward. We never spoke of that moment again. Eating last piece of cheesecake. Caught my sister giving my friend a BJ in the hay barn when we were all around 15 stroke 16 years old. My aunt admitted to me that she bought her sons, my cousin drugs because at least she knew where he was getting them from. I heard from other family members that she would use him to shoplift groceries when he was little. Hide packages of bacon under his clothes, etc. This same cousin ended up doing time for armed robbery to support his drug addiction. After he got out, he ended up staying with his father and completely cut contact with his mother and her whole side of the family. Can't say that I blame him. I just hope he's got himself clean and has a decent life now. I also used my aunt as a shining example of how not to be a mother to my own son. My wife and sister snooped on their brother's computer and found out he was all over the gay dating websites looking for hookups. The reason this is shocking to them is that he is ultra-religious, an associate pastor, teaches Sunday school, is married, and he was trolling for black guys to bang him. It's incredible how many people preach hate toward being gay in church but when they get home the assless chaps come out. I walked on my dad eating a full cake by himself in the middle of night, when we agreed to crack it in together the next morning. His excuse was I couldn't fall asleep knowing there is a untouched cake in the fridge waiting for me. This is my favorite in this whole thread. Little brother poking the electricity plug using a fork because I told him so. Literally shocking. A boom boom chskdkdlssddsk. Pooping. This may seem light. But I saw with our eye too much of great aunt Carol. Walked in on my dad and one of his girlfriends fricking on the roof. He was balls deep and didn't notice a thing but I just quickly closed the attic door and ran to tell my sister. He didn't notice at all and this was brought up because a week or two after he believed he got the girl pregnant. Don't know the rest because he was too busy picking up other women instead. My my teenage brother was having a sleepover in our shed at the bottom of the garden. I happened to glance out the window and saw he was having basically a big adult party with his friends. The idiots didn't think to close the curtains. Being an older brother I thought the adequate response was to log into the speaker in the shed and blast wannabe by the Spice Girls as loud as possible. Yeah he didn't talk to me for a while after that. Dong move on the bro scale, but freaking hilarious on the older brother scale. 
Not exactly caught but my family is super open. It's not uncommon for us to have surreal conversations. A while ago my sister found out I rode backdoor with my boyfriend. She was disgusted but we soon forgot. Until I'm having a Sunday roast with my boyfriend and family. When she looks up from her plate and said have you done anal again. My mum laughed. Another time I walked in on my 80 something granddad brushing his teeth butt naked. I was 5. That stuck with me. Until I'm having a Sunday roast with my boyfriend and family. Considering the context of the previous sentence, my mind took that to a completely different place than dinner. I caught my older cousin molesting his baby sister. He then started molesting us both for years, until we were preteens. The most fricked up part of all was his father, my uncle. Knew it was happening and never tried to stop it. He would even try to get me to share a bed with my cousin when I would sleep over. I would deliberately wet myself so I wouldn't have to. Years later, we are now all adults. My uncle is arrested for molesting a child. I now know why he never stopped the abuse. Because he was getting off on it. Only my husband knows about this. No one else in the family does. I still have to see my rapist of a cousin during family events and pretend like everything is kosher. You 100% don't have to still see him or pretend everything is okay. It's super harmful to your emotional health, and he's already done enough damage. I highly encourage you to seek some counseling and if nothing else, give yourself the gift of space from those kinds of family members. Hugs. That's heavy crap to deal with. My daughter masturbating. She thinks I didn't see anything but I did. One of the things I'm not going to look forward to with having daughters is boyfriends. Like seriously I don't even have kids but thinking about some jackass porking my daughter gets me mad as crap. So like flicking the bean is better than her railing some frick boy. Smoking weed. In my family. That's a big deal. Sounds like your family needs to mellow out, man. This might be a stretch of what's being asked, but it was pretty surreal. I was in college and on my cell phone with my dad. I used to call home maybe every other week. Something like that. Usual crap. Courses are going alright. Blah blah. Girlfriend is doing fine. His house phone rings. He was also on his cell. And he yells for my mom to answer it. They've always been kind of guilty of talking to each other while on the phone. So the back and forth taking forever wasn't surprising. My dad goes back to talking to me but he's distracted. My mom is getting louder in the background. Hey. I gotta call you back. Your sister was violated. And he hangs up. So yeah, I heard my parents find out, in real time, that their daughter was in the hospital after a violation. Maybe I didn't catch anything, but certainly shocking. My cousin crap on the floor. He was 20 at the time. He was just getting shifty. About 15 years ago at my parents house they had a printer that acted up. Shocking I know. I went onto the computer, waking it from sleep mode, and the printer started printing right away. Out came a photo and dating profile of a woman in her 40s or 50s wearing a leather bra and pants. She would have looked like a totally average middle aged woman if she had on regular clothes. I assumed my dad printed it out and I never told either of them I found it. I walked in on my dad and some of his friends snorting coke in our kitchen when I came to get a glass of Kool-Aid. He sent me away without explanation, but later I, stupidly, asked my mom if C was a white powder. Somehow she immediately knew why I was asking and was mad at dad. You failed your father that day. Didn't catch the act, just the aftermath. My older brother took a pin to my naked barbie and attempted to improve her anatomical accuracy. Read. He gouged a painful looking gash between her legs and pricked holes for nipples crap on the floor and proceed to get their butt kicked by my grandma for doing so at the age of freaking 8. She chased him around the kitchen table. Once he got to the wall she pushed the table onto him, keeping him in place so she could grab him. Whooped his butt with a tree branch for like 2 minutes. I read that as proceeded to get their butt licked by grandma and I swear to god I dry heaved. I caught my brother purchasing an iMac. Sad times. Walked into my uncle's house once and preteen me thought he was very very sick because he was sitting with his eyes half open, surrounded by needles like the doctor gives. I ran outside to warn my mom that uncle looked pretty rough and needed to go to the doctor. Preteen me was extremely naive. My brother took dong pics on my phone when he was like 9. I woke up to that. It was scarring. 
I saw my uncle fall from a ladder extended to the second story of his house when he was cleaning leaves from the gutters. He was reaching too far from the ladder and lost his balance. Fortunately, he landed in a patch of pea willows below which helped cushion his landing. One of the many times crushing pea saved a life. My boyfriend's mum likes stealing his stuff a lot, and mine if I leave it around. Accidentally left my new watch in their bathroom after having a shower so we went into her room to find it and found a giant box of celebs. Why would you need more than two? There was like 30 in there. Well she obviously steals them for somewhere. Me and a friend walked in on his sister fricking her high school soccer coach. It was a common rumor that he slept with students and left his wife to marry a former student a few years later. Best part is that he was our science teacher two years later and we would torment him all the time. He was just casually walking down the street in town, late at night with six gang members and holding a sledgehammer. Caught my dad with his dong up a woman's ass at an orgy, so I thought I'd join in and put my dong in her mouth. When we were done I told him off about cheating on my mom. But I haven't, he said. I don't get the joo My little brother thought it would be a hilarious prank to take a crap in our shampoo bottle. My dad and I caught him squatting over the bottle trying to force out the turd when we went in there to yell at him for being in the shower for 45 minutes. There was only one bottle of shampoo in our shower. He used it as well. Not sure what he was thinking, exactly. Found lingerie, lube and celibin parent sock drawer. I was 13. I'm 17 now and they don't know I know and I plan to keep it that way till I die. Someday, when you find your own lingerie, lube, and celeb in a sock drawer, you'll know the apple didn't fall far from the tree. Walked into the kitchen in the middle of the night to get a glass of water. Had to pass through the living room to get there. We had extended family from out of state at the time staying with us. My grandmother was on the couch, next to the couch my gross uncle was asleep on a futon, and next to the futon was my cousin, gross uncle's daughter, well, walked in on gross uncle jerking his meat like a furious Jamaican to some pee on his laptop, literally within arm's reach of his mother and his daughter. Upvote for jerky Jamaican. I caught my bro with two women in his place, I walked out before he noticed me. Good job to the both of you. You didn't cock block and he had a threesome. Caught grandma walking normal when she thought nobody was home. She was super passive aggressive and always needed special treatment. Couldn't help or do anything around the house. Got home from school early and she was perfectly fine until she saw me. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.